So my client Ed has actualized his dream life by applying self-talk a certain way, as well as being in flow state. He now earns over $200,000 a month. And so I just had to capture the details of how it all happened and share it with you. Thus, we have a two and a half hour conversation with him today, which I trust you'll enjoy and benefit greatly from. And I guarantee you're going to hear things that have never been discussed before. So grab your note-taking device and get ready to take a lot of notes as there's going to be a lot of valuable wisdom shared with you. And now I've broken this down into three parts. First, Ed's story and his results working together, applying self-talk and auto-suggestions in a certain way. And number two, his business model, which he goes into detail on, lots of valuable information there, which he has never shared publicly, but so graciously chose to share it with us. And then number three, we get into how he made it all happen in a flow-based way. Also, I received a lot of emails inquiring about a business consulting with me personally. So I do have something that I'm working on. And in the description, I've got a link to a form where you can enter your first name, your email, and I can notify you when that's ready. And I look forward to working with you. So enjoy today's conversation with Ed, and I trust you'll benefit greatly from it. Ed Barrigo, how are you? Nice to see you. Thank you for joining us here today. Ed has built a very successful business. What we've done is we've incorporated a number of clips today. While we were driving, we had two wonderful conversations. We had a conversation about flow. Ed maintains his flow and how helpful that has been for his business. He's going to share that in that segment. We also discussed his business model and getting into the nuances of business. And that's also included. And so in this part right here, this beautiful view we have, Ruben, who I'm also going to have a conversation with. Ed's going to meet Ruben for the first time so graciously allowed us to use his place. We're on the rooftop and we thought with this wonderful view here, let's record the video here. And so this conversation is about Ed, his start in entrepreneurship, steps that he took to get to the level of success where he is right now and how, how well is your business doing right now? We're doing pretty good. Uh, we're doing at 200,000 a month right now, local lead generation. I specifically help restoration companies grow and scale, you know, by getting them more lead flow and uh, it's worked out pretty well so far and we're still growing. Wonderful. So you built this business to success and you're continuously building in it. We're gonna talk about that and we're also gonna talk about what you applied as a result of working together and what we talk about on this channel that help contribute to your success. Does that sound good? Sounds good. So share with us your story of how and why you got started in entrepreneurship and uh, some story uh, components that led you to where you are right now that you feel be will be valuable for everyone. Sure. So like most people may be listening, right? Um, I had a corporate job. I come from the video game industry, actually. Fun place, but they overwork you a lot. So in the end, I just kind of wanted to work for myself or not for anybody. And my first venture was launching products on Amazon. Um, there were like these uh, for you know, baby shower premium gift bundles that did pretty well. That was my first venture. I learned marketing on that. I learned how to be on my own and, you know, uh, finances and all that. But I fell in love with advertising and marketing. And so a year after that, I used those reserves um, and started my own digital marketing agency, which I have now. And we're launching into several divisions. But that at a high level, that's kind of how I started, um, you know, and I just you know, was tired of working for someone else. Great industry, great. I had a great, you know, co-workers, but I just kind of wanted financial independence and freedom. That's wonderful. And you have come a long way. So congratulations to all that you, you built in just a short period of time. And you did it by applying some sound principles. So as mentioned, Ed's going to share some of the business building stuff. He's going to talk about flow state. One of the things that you had mentioned to me that was really helpful for you was auto suggestion and self-talk. Can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, I think early on, you know, I think that also, you know, affirmations was part of that. Um, you know, Joseph was able to help me at the time. It was interesting because I started working with Joseph early on before I, I blew up. You, know. yeah, you were making a few thousand dollars a month. Right. So you were you were getting by, just getting by, but now you're doing phenomenally well. And I think it was due to a lot of things, right? Self-talk was just something we might talk about. But the affirmations, which Joseph really helped me with, was just having that be part of my morning routine. Cause at the time I was just trying to unlearn a lot of limited beliefs about money, about energy, 
about, you know, I was really still building my confidence with sales and marketing and talking to clients and fulfillment and all this stuff that you learn as a business owner. And through the self-talk, through the affirmations that Joseph was able to help me with, I think it started compounding every day and really instilling that self-belief that I needed to be a leader, run a company, run a team. So wonderful. So it seems so simple on the surface that auto-suggestion and self-talk can result in such a profound transformation. When we consider that most of what we do is subconscious, then we understand clearly why that's the case. So you said you had limiting beliefs in the earlier stages. What were some of those beliefs that the auto-suggestions and the self-talk uh, released identification to, brought to awareness and released identification to? Yeah, so I think at the time, you know, especially when you're learning sales and you're asking for money for services, yeah, sometimes that's not as natural. And, you know, I redefined completely my definition of sales because when people hear sales, it's, oh, they picture the sleazy guy who's trying to sell them a bad car. They think of someone trying to take advantage of them. They think of the pushy guy, uh, the sleazy guy. When a lot of the things that I needed to succeed, I needed to learn and I, need to, I needed to actually overcome my beliefs in them if I was gonna succeed. For example, how can I sell someone a $2,000 a month retainer or something equivalent when I never bought that myself? A few things in paradigm shifts that I had was, you know, uh, learning how you sell is actually how you buy and how you buy is actually how you sell. And now when, it, when people come up to me, when they approach me, like when you're about to cross the street, right? Those guys wearing those vests, like, hey, hey sir, can I get two minutes of your time? I always give them those two minutes. Why? Because I want them, I want someone to give me the two minutes to explain what I'm trying to sell or provide or offer. So it, it, there's that yin yang that goes. So I had to learn all of that, kind of overcome those, uh, those, uh, those limited beliefs. And I think part of that too was just instilling confidence and belief that I can do it. Why not me? I'm, I'm cut from the same cloth as everybody else. I, you know, I used to think, Oh, maybe just because I didn't, um, I didn't, I didn't come up from a rich family or a rich community, you know. So I had to learn a lot of the stuff which you helped me with, and the affirmations helped me. Wonderful. And so you had these conversations with yourself. You were dialoguing with yourself. You were making peace with certain experiences with your past, and you realized that those experiences from your past don't define you. In a way, let's say if there was some experience in the past where you experienced a disempowering or you may have learned this negative belief surrounding client acquisition or building relationships with client, you started to release identification with right. it. So part of it was bringing yourself to the present moment if you became aware or reactive to any of these beliefs playing out and then having a conversation or applying auto-suggestion. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. That How did was... you go about doing that? Um, it was the compounding effect of having like the, for example, for something I did that worked well, maybe some of you can relate to this, but for some reason, and I think you helped me instill in this, having conversations while facing yourself in a mirror, for example, like self-talk, um, really helped me because it's something, I don't know, at least for me, there's something psychological about when you're talking to yourself and it's not somebody else, it's almost like a self-guided therapy. Um, hell, you could probably even do that even better with AI nowadays, but that's a whole different thing. Um, and that, because I was talking to myself, there was, I took it a little bit differently. And having that become a habit and doing it every morning, you just start, you know, we're, you know, we're creatures of habit. And just having that daily reminder of like, you know, impl implementing those, those self-beliefs that I can do it, that, you know, um, you know, making sure I'm reaffirming my new beliefs and who I'm becoming. And sometimes that road can be very uh, adverse and difficult, but know that sometimes you do have to be in your uncomfort zone to grow and that's okay. Um, you can either, you, you make it or you don't, but realize that is part of the journey, changing who you are to becoming. You have to, if you're trying to earn seven figures, you have to become a seven-figure person. 
there's no, there's no shortcuts. So you acknowledge that you truly are someone that earns seven figures and you started to acknowledge that more so in your conversations with yourself. So in the earlier stages, and maybe you still do it, you said you mentioned that you would talk to yourself in the mirror. Yep. So can you reveal you know, the process you went through? Yeah, so what I did was, it's very simple. I wrote down some affirmations like on my phone and I had a little reminder in the bathroom. So when I wake up every morning, I saw the reminder and it's like do daily affirmations, right? Just like brushing your teeth, just like washing your face, you wanna, wanna make it into a habit. And so I'm already there, I'm already half awake. You might as well do the affirmations. Again, trying to set up for success in the in least amount of resistance, right? And that, that's worked well for me. And I would read them out loud while, while like speaking to myself. It, and I know it's weird, it's, su <laughs> it's super weird. This is the thing, uh, right? One might consider this to be weird, but it is effective. The reality is we are speaking with ourselves, yeah. do you agree, pretty much all day long. There are moments in silence, there are moments in meditation. Yet when you and I are having a conversation right now, I'm imagining my relationship to you. I'm imagining what you're saying. I am relating to what you're saying. I'm having a conversation with myself about what you're saying. And that conversation is impressing upon the subconscious mind. Now we're doing this with, when we're by ourselves, we're doing this when we're driving, we're doing this everywhere. And so you are simply bringing awareness to this. That's a good point. And you are being conscious about it. And so this has, this started to shift. So what are the, uh, shift your experiences of life. So what were the shifts that you started to experience as a result of doing this? Some of the shifts were just really more of a deeper confidence that I can do it. And as the business built up and hitting, hitting these milestones, it kind of forces you to become the leader that you're trying to be anyway. And I was telling Joseph earlier, right, the universe has an interesting way of challenging you. The minute you announce either publicly or privately a goal, the universe has a very funny and interesting way of challenging you not just to make sure you're worthy of it, but it's it's the it's the obstacles that are going to get you to the to the next level. And if you know, um, and a lot of a lot of people will say, "Hey, it's this is happening to me," you know. But I argue that it's happening for you, so you can level up successfully. Um, and this is my not might be controversial, but a lot of people want seven figures, so they want a certain goal. But they're they don't des they don't really deserve it. They don't you, believe that they deserve it. They don't believe they did this. That's a whole that's a huge issue. Even though the reality is that their whole complete fulfillment, love, happiness, bliss, peace. That's what auto suggestions do. They acknowledge that you already are that. And you release identification to programming. Yeah. I call that the matrix programming. The programming that seems to point to visible causes, like it's that person's fault or because of this and because of that. All that does is it shifts attention in a direction that might not be helpful. What we wanna do is without shame or condemnation, acknowledge that now is where all the power is. And so now is where all the power is and you have it all now and thus you accept, I am that. I am this way, feel it into existence. And then you acknowledge that when you accept that feeling and you feel it in that moment, you feel that deservedness. Is that what occurred? Yeah, you feel like you can accept that kind of money or goal, but also the value that you need to be able to bring to earn that is what, what people mostly miss. Um, and so I just wanted to build the skills. And so when, when the time came, great. I, it was an easy transition to accept. Now it's the new normal. Now it's baseline. And, you know, I think that's why you should always be trying to grow and level up. Yes. So, um, yep. Do you, you believe that, because I believe this, is the more you grow and level up is really the degree of self-acceptance. So the degree of self-acceptance, your authentic self, that you already are love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, you're accepting it more so each day. And as you're accepting it more so, it's externalizing as your form of fulfillment, which could be for one person, seven-figure business, another person, it could be mm. ideal relationship, the next person, it could be a proficient artist and whatever 
kind of modality. It could be athleticism. It could be whatever. Each person knows, I believe, truly what they desire to be. As Steve Jobs said, follow your heart and intuition. So right. did you find that to be the experience that as you were applying auto-suggestion and self-talk, which is a form of self-acceptance, acknowledging that you are already that which you may appear to seek, it started to manifest. Like you wow. started to behave differently. Yep. You behave differently. People started to show up and you would yep. relate to them ideally like that ideal Ed, let's say, right. which is who you truly are. And opportunities started to show up and dots started to connect and things started to make more sense. Is that fair to say? When you say it that way, it does make more sense. And I think as you get older, you tend to learn more about yourself and giving yourself more self-love, self-understanding, uh, empathy as well. And when you are set, when you set new goals for yourself, the universe has a way of, like you said, giving you the dots, the people, the mechanism, the tools uh, to succeed. And there is something about that inner work that you can do within yourself that is reflected or better yet manifested externally. And I think you're right. The more you kind of do some of that, it does. I think the external happens just to be maybe the byproduct. Yes. Yeah. You can yeah. say. What's fascinating is uh, you started off with, like I started off with, and many may have started off with, certain beliefs that they have identified with, we have identified with. Then we chose something. We chose the path of entrepreneurship. You chose it. And by committing to that vision, beliefs play out to reveal what have been identified with. That, that will be the experiences as we're interacting with this world. Now, as they play out, you can choose to either recreate those patterns again or not identify with those beliefs and thus not create those patterns again. And so what you did was you did not create those patterns again. And as a result of not creating those patterns again, you started to do things differently. You started to be more creative, expressive, which is your authentic way of being. You, you got to be more who you are. And, and entrepreneurship was the catalyst? I think so. I think you're onto something. You know, it just so happens that, that this journey took it, you know, it did involve a lot of inner work. And I think the beliefs, which we mentioned, is almost everything. You know, that gives you the internal, it's that they take the external. And I think that that's a really good way to look at it, different angle. I like that. Yes. See, we always say the same things. We're pointing to the same one cause within, there's only one cause right. within, and what are we relating to that one cause that appears and animates all that appears to manifest, to reflect what we're relating to that one cause, which is the beliefs. And so every day is an opportunity. Like right now, we have an opportunity. You've never done anything like this before, right? No. So this is an opportunity. Why is it an right. opportunity for you? Um, like, always, like I always tell my team, I think when you're stepping outside your comfort zone, that's the only time you can grow whether it's a small thing or a large thing. If you look back at your life and you'll look at all the times you've had a leap of growth, most likely it came from a place of discomfort and you just rolled through it, you ran through it and you came out, you came out of it stronger and better. And I 100% believe that. Yeah, because what's the problem with what is experienced as discomfort? There's no problem. Where if, if we said there was a problem, that's us believing it, right? Right. Same thing with uh, stepping into the cave we may fear to enter, enter, which could be starting that business or different aspects of the business, like sales, for example. Right. Team building, asking for uh, a higher uh, a fee, for example. Yeah. That could be an example. You've not done it before. I remember when I asked for a bigger fee, it was uncomfortable, but I knew that the uncomfortable emotions or how I was relating to the emotions was through a belief. Then eventually, upon not identifying with that belief, you just do it. Yep. You feel excited about it. And why do you feel excited about it? For many reasons. But one of the reasons is entrepreneurship is the way we consider it to be, is about doing, is engaging in a relationship. A client, a prospect is interested in a solution. You are the solution provider. You're a wonderful solution provider. You build a wonderful team. Your solutions are effective. They produce results. And so, I would consider that a disservice if 
you were not offering that. Right. Right. So now you feel that you honestly feel like, look, I want to get the service out to as many people that benefit. from it. I'm that's not going to go and try to convince that's everyone. That's the best feeling. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so that's how you feel towards sales now. Right. Yes. Whereas before it might be not good enough, not fair enough to ask. Consider this harmonious relationship, fair mutual exchange. These are the kinds of self-talk and auto suggestions you want to further encourage. Because every time we impress the subconscious mind with this kind of self-talk and auto-suggestion, we find we automatically do it. So when you go into a proposition, you sit down, you have a conversation, it's down to earth, it's laid back, they share their pains, desires, frustrations, and you're not trying to convince them. Right. You're looking for how your product, your service, your company can benefit them. And You'll make an offer if there's a match. Yep. If there's no match, you might consider going back and modifying your products and services and optimizing and yep. then making another proposition. It's all, at the end of the day, feedback. Yeah. Positive, negative. Optimization data. It's right? all feedback that you can optimize, yes. assess. And I encourage everybody to, if you want to quickly learn, improve a concept, enlarge something, or make something better, take that feedback and have that feedback loop I think Ray Dalio talks about that in his book, Principles. I love that. Um, yeah. If you decrease the time for that feedback loop to then make another iteration, whatever that means to you with what you're working on, I guarantee you, you're going to learn and succeed much faster. That you could even say uh, the most rapid, rapid growing businesses or you know, most successful people have that feedback loop super tight and just keep reiterating, keep, you know, assessing and you'll be, you'll find something that's working well for you quickly. That is wonderful insight. Thank you so much for sharing that with everyone. You have uh, elevated yourself to be a wonderful leader for your team. So congratulations. Thank you. And, Thank you so much. You know, this is the relationship that you have with yourself. You know, every day in the entrepreneurial journey, any journey we go on, journey of life, we're building a relationship with ourselves. Would you agree? Absolutely. And so what kind of relationship is that? Is that one of, we already are love, happiness, fulfillment, bliss, peace. And you can use any catalyst you like. We've chosen entrepreneurship. It can be done, like for example, I've spoken to skateboarders. Like for example, I was hanging out with my friend Day and uh, they had, uh, he had some uh, professional skateboarders in there. And they were talking about their relationship to skateboarding. And I connected very deeply because that's the relationship I have with public speaking. Right. That's the relationship I have with snowboarding. That's the relationship I have with entrepreneurship. So choose your catalyst. And so you've chosen entrepreneurship. Yep. Now, you said some many interesting things, but one thing I want to go deeper in is about the experience of navigating existence. So James Allen, one of my favorite books, As a Man Think It, he said that uh, circumstances don't make us, but yet they reveal us, reveal us to ourselves. So the different circumstances that occur reveal the beliefs we're identified with. Mm -hmm. And so in that moment, no shame and condemnation, you have an opportunity to reimagine it or to release identification or to do something that will shift internally or release identification to that belief that is not true and authentic to your true way of being, which is love, happiness, peace, fulfillment, bliss. And so entrepreneurship offered some of those opportunities, probably a lot, because for me, that was a lot of those, I would say. And that's what makes it fun. We're not running away from them. Right. You didn't run away from them. Like right. you didn't get to six figures by running away from the challenges. Right. So can you share about some pivotal challenges or maybe one ch pivotal challenge that to exemplify? Yeah, I think one thing that, you know, when I was learning to sell, like at the end of the day, I just remember wasting a lot of time almost procrastinating and not doing the stuff I was supposed to. And when you're either trying to advance in your career or launching your own business or whatever, I mean, we happen to choose entrepreneurship. So that's the context I can give examples in. I just remember kind of running away or not doing the things I was supposed to. That's making phone calls, um, emailing my list, things, things that actually moved the needle. And as the, you know, when I was just kind of fed up with the progress, I finally did the work. I finally faced the line, line face to face and did what was the most scariest to me. And 
I eventually got through the whole lump of learning sales and then I had to rewire my brain and learn that it's actually it's it's actually advising someone helping them inquire into a change and when that started happening things started moving forward so my my suggestion would be don't embrace the obstacle embrace the resistance it's going to hurt for a while it's going to said uh, embrace the ob- embrace the obstacle embrace, embrace the resistance it. yes yes i love Absolutely. that Absolutely. i love that yeah. embrace it face resistance it this is your friend yeah it's, it's revealing. Path. It's, it's a revealing, path to right? growth. It's resistance. It's the only way to path through the growth. Where's the resistance coming from? It's identification to a belief. Right. The emotions reveal. You can have a conversation with your emotions. That's part of building a relationship with yourself. You can understand where these thoughts arise from. That's part of building a relationship with yourself. Yeah. Down to even, for example, as we're having this conversation, you can be aware of if there's any stiffness or tension in the body. Right. What is that revealing? You could release that tension. You could just release identification to it let it be and then every time you do that you reprogram the subconscious mind so i like what you did you did a combination of auto suggestion self talk as well as applying it to the various parts of the entrepreneurial journey on the way to actualizing the first level of success 10,000 a month then 50,000 a month 100,000 a month 200,000 a month it's the same process again and again and again what over here is revealing that which I'm identified with? And it's fun too, right? Because you gladly accepted to do this. You've never done this before, but you gladly accepted it because you know the power of you. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. the power that's within you. And where is that power directed in a way that you wouldn't consider to be ideal? Right. So you said to yourself, you know what? I'm going to have this conversation with Joseph. This is the first time I've done it. And let's do it. And you rolled right into it. And maybe you were a little tense about it. Maybe there was uncertainty about it. But you know how to speak to yourself. And I mentioned to Ed, I congratulated him on doing it because Ed has a wonderful team right now. And you're a wonderful leader. And every time you do something like this, experientially, they feel it when you communicate. Have you noticed that? That definitely that happens. Feeling is the secret, right? Yeah. It cannot be faked. Yeah. This true. is this That's is very true. Like, like the question really is on the entrepreneurial journey or any journey, are we being real with ourselves? Right. Like, are we the person that we are ideally already? Are we embodying that? Are we living that way now? Yeah, you want to be honest with yourself. Yeah, honestly. And that's, yeah, self-disillusionment can lead to a bad road. And no shame and condemnation. Right. There's always an opportunity to be honest with ourselves. Yeah. Now is where the opportunity is. Like right now. Yep. And then the next now. And the next now, and the next now, and the next now. And you can, you know, I give a very simple instruction in my videos, which is essentially, if there's any tension, reactivity, emotions experienced a certain way, they're revealing thoughts, overthinking, bring awareness to the belief behind it and release it, release identification to it. And then what happens is you will creatively flow. You will end up doing the thing that you genuinely wanted to do. No one was forcing you to do sales. You genuinely wanted to do it. Right. You genuinely wanted to build a business. It was authentic to how you desire to live. Yep. And so you said, okay, there are these, let's say, call them flow restrictors happening. No shame or condemnation. I accept myself. I'm going to release them. I'm no longer going to identify with them. And then I translated over to the success. And you just do this all day long, right? Yep. So number one, bring awareness to it. So prior to... For example, let's use uh, public speaking or, you know, prior to the interaction, you're aware of any beliefs that are brought to awareness. Could be, will people accept me and all these kinds of things that could be, uh, that are, let's say, not authentic and true to your natural way of being, which is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. You write them down, auto-suggestion or self-talk, release identification. You'll notice that it's easier to have the conversation. So during the conversation, tension may arise. Again, no shame and condemnation. Because we don't want to suppress the emotions or shame or blame ourselves. We want to accept self. And so if anything arises that is not true and authentic, there's an opportunity to, after the interaction, you could write it down. What I did many years in, uh, when I would teach uh, the speed reading workshops was after the workshops, I would write down all these different opportunities, I call them, like beliefs that were brought to awareness through the, and it could be nuances. It could be if a person looks at me this way, then I feel like I'm not accepted. Like this particular look, you know what I'm talking about? Like nuances like that. It could be something very general, like I just generally don't feel accepted. Or it could be particular nuances. When a person does this one thing, then I don't feel accepted. 
And when the identification is released to that, you're free. You're free to be who you are. Then you can also do that after the interaction. So how you felt before the interaction, during the interaction, and after the interaction. What you thought before the interaction, during the interaction, and after the interaction. What you believed was happening before the interaction, during the interaction, after the interaction. That's all optimization data. And then from there, you know what, a per what you're identified with. Is that fair to say? Very fair to say. Well said. Thank you. And so this is what you do. Yeah. And so from there, you know, you and I spoke about, and we're going to get into Ed's uh, strategies and his build his business building modalities and techniques and so forth, as well as we're going to talk about flow. I'm going to plug it into the video. All those nuances. So all those things, I would say, appeared as you were doing this. And so the next opportunity showed up. The next business deal showed up. The next client proposition showed up. Maybe a new ad campaign that you were running that you felt uncertain. Maybe all of a sudden now you're putting yourself on camera and you just repeated this again and again and again and again and you just keep doing it, right? And, you're, and your business just keeps growing. It starts to compound and as you grow, a lot, a lot of people won't, it's, you know, it's a little bit of both of, it's, it gets easier, but the problems become more complex. Easier because now you have a team you can lever you know, like, you know, have leverage. Uh, they can do tasks for you, more of the admin stuff, whatever the case is, but problems never go away. You just become better at dealing with them and better at, you know, handling them, so. Because you don't see a problem as a problem. You no. see it as an opportunity. And that took a long time to learn. Yes, and that's a wonderful, accurate way. Yeah. That's an accurate It's an opportunity for you to improve something in yourself and your business and in a process. And it, it'll give you an opportunity to, to learn, whether it's you or your employees, and it's very helpful. So, Ed, I wanted to ask you some questions about your business. So, what kind of services do you offer right now? So, we do local lead generation for restoration companies specifically. Um, these are, you know, we help them get services and jobs like water damage, mold removal, fire damage. And uh, we niche down very early on. We help them get leads, but we also do a lot of like consultation, you know, consulting, uh, help them close the jobs, you know, because I think nowadays you just can't be a little, you know, a marketing company doing lead gen anymore. You have to be a little bit more, but that's essentially like what, what we do. We, we just grown that. So, by the way, thank you for breakfast. We had a wonderful breakfast here in Encinitas. So you offer lead generation services plus consulting, as in you help them convert those leads into clients. Is that fair to say? Yeah, we do. We help them with a lot of things. So lead flow, mainly getting them calls, whether it's emergency jobs. So um, it's a very specific industry that actually is a multi-billion dollar industry that you probably most, most likely have never heard of, but you know, I think there's a saying, right? The the riches are in the niches. So we we did, we happen to do very well there early on. And so, how long have you been doing this for? Coming up to four years now. Um, started it started picking up momentum in 2020, and uh, I think I had a huge advantage early on because a lot of our com competition didn't advertise, didn't push the throttle during that time. It was obviously, you know, there was the you know. Uh, global pandemic or there was a lot of uncertainty but you know we just advertised early on and i think that gave us the momentum and our edge to where we are now so wonderful and how did you get into it um you know at the time i was you know there was a year of a lot of struggle of just marketing to everybody and then everybody knows right when you're marketing to everybody you're kind of talking to nobody so I did some research, you know, um, that there's a book called Blue Ocean. It talks about how to get a, how to get a, you know, an edge over your competition. Uh, there's different ways for that, right? So I spotted an opportunity in that industry. There was a few people that were, few competitors that made it work, which kind of proved the concept for me. And I told myself, you know what, let me, because uh, I remember when people start out, including myself, I would quit a lot, right? I would try a niche, oh, it didn't work, and I would just give up and try something else. 
But I told myself, you know what? Let me commit to this. Let me do three months, um, go all in and see what happens. And, you know, pretty much right at the end of it, when I would usually quit, things started uh, happening. I, I got my first client, one led to two, two led to five, and now we're over, we have over 100 clients now today. But um, so, yeah, I it, it, it just committed and I made it work. So I niche down, which does a lot of things. It actually focuses on your messaging, your offer. It's more specific. People can relate to it. You know, I always tell people you should know your niches or whoever your target audience is, you should know so much about them that you could write a page in their diary. And at that, at that point, I took those really good gold insights and um, I pretty much, you know, used that in my marketing materials, which resonated with them even more. And at that point, it just snowballed. So uh, when your messaging is like snipered to a, like almost like a sniper, it's to one specific audience, uh, you can relate with them a lot more and easier. So everything, everything's just easier at that point. So is that what you did in that first uh, 90 days is you got to know them really well and that, that helped you with uh, writing? and communication with them? Exactly. Um, so I always look for certain industry lingo. Every industry has their terms, whether it's like real estate, sales, in, uh, insurance, whatever it is, right? Um, you know, having, by the way you ask them questions in like the discovery phase, you know, when you mention certain industries or certifications or whatever it is for that industry, you kind of also get to, you're telling them also that you know what you're talking about and that was the yes. biggest thing. Um, a lot of what they say, you know, what this like, so good advertising enters into a conversation into someone's mind that it's already ongoing and happening. Yes. And when you can like kind of get into that conversation that's already going on in their head, then you're onto something. And that's when you haven't, that's when you can run an ad for months, for even up to a year, because it resonates so much. So I want to talk a bit about advertising. So you're essentially helping them get leads through paid advertising that you're running, right? Right. For them. Right. And you're also helping them optimize conversations with the prospects to convert to clients and et cetera. Right. Related to generating more sales. Right. How did you learn about ads? You know, I I took a few courses. I know I was a self, you know, I, I learned all by myself. You know, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube, there's a lot of great stuff on the internet overall. There's threads, um, online threads. And, you know, I just, I just really, so I'm kind of like an obsessive learner. I go all in and I try to just learn as much as I can, as quickly as I can. So I just went all in. I listened to podcasts. I, any, anything, uh, any book on a certain subject when it comes to paid media or advertising, I read it. Uh, I invested money, you know, I remember the first credit card I, or not my first one, but a credit card I opened up to start the business. It was like, you know, zero APR for 16 months. And I told myself, okay, you know what? I'm gonna go all in with this credit card. I'm gonna take a huge gamble on myself and hopefully this pays off and it did. Uh, and I and just, are you referring to this particular business or your first business? Uh, my first, yeah, the agency I have now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you took a credit card loan or a credit card to start this business? I did. Okay. Yep. Prior to that, you and I, when we used to coach before, you had another business where you were selling stuff, physical products, right? Yeah. So my very first venture was uh, selling products on Amazon. Um, at the time, so this is kind of funny because, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a guy, right? Like I, uh, you know, at the time, I was going through a lot of baby showers, and I noticed that, you know, I just didn't, there wasn't like a premium bundle. So like, for example, I, uh, you know, just because I know more about that, because I, I have a younger sister, she's got a baby, my, my baby nephew Malachi, he's adorable. You get to learn what they really want and what they don't want. And I thought there was an opportunity there. And so I started a like premium bundled gift Kind of like a baby shower gift that you can buy to give someone else for on, baby, on their baby showers, um, and it had like you know uh, uh, there was like swaddle blankets, like you know uh, 
safe silicone products that they can use that it's baby friendly. Uh, there was like a little toy bear. There was a lot of just really cute themed clothes that they, a set of clothes as well. So um, that was my first venture. Um, I did pretty, I did okay on that. I sold out of all my inventory. And that was the key thing that actually helped me learn marketing and advertising. And so that was like my very first steps into business, you could say. Uh, at that time, I went all in. You know, I already quit my job, I had savings. And so that, from there, I took, I took those earnings over to start the digital marketing agency I have now. And so then from there, it, you know, obviously, his, um, the rest is history, but that was my very first, yeah, very first venture. So the earnings plus that card, which that card was used for advertising, is that what it was? Yeah. So the earnings kind of, kind of, you know, gave me some, gave me some, some, some reserves to kind of launch this new agency. The card was more like, you know what? To take care of your basic needs, like the card. The card was more of like for ads mainly. mainly. Okay. Yeah, for ads. I'm like, I'm gonna run out because what other people do is they'll. Their own network, they'll go to BNIs, which is all valid. It's all good. They'll look, they'll join their local chambers, and they did all that stuff. But for me, it just didn't really work as much as I yes. thought it would. So I'm a huge believer. You should. I I, I, I practice what I preach. If I'm going to run a paid ads agency, I'm going to I'm going to get clients through paid ads. I like. That. And guess what? It I like it better because you there's more. There's more risk at the table. You have to kind of make it work so it you get an ROI. Uh, so to me, it just made sense. And I started much faster. You don't need a kind of network. You don't need word of mouth, even though that's all good. Word of mouth comes later. Once you do a good job, you know, good, a good job for them, the referrals come in, which we, which we get today. But so we, I just started off with paid ads and ended up working. And I, I tell people, start up with paid ads. Once you kind of get a concept, a proven concept uh you know for our industry relatively there's nothing to prove it's like hey these guys need leads anyone in home service in the home service space pretty much need lead flow so there's it wasn't like i wasn't reinventing the light bulb but yeah very good so in my entrepreneurial program i don't know if anyone's watching this who's a student uh what i do is i segment entrepreneurship in the following categories got sales marketing innovation operations, finance, and leadership. That's how I like to segment it. So, Ed, you're referring to now more on the marketing side with the paid advertising. So, the marketing for your business, as in bringing in clients that are interested in the service, is done through pay, paid advertising primarily, right? Yeah, so how we get our, our clients as an agency is through paid, ad, paid ads. And once there are our clients, to fulfill their needs, the client's fulfillment, yeah. we also do paid ads on their behalf. So it's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a wheel of, what do you call it? Like a circle, yes. essentially, a wheelhouse effect. Uh, so that it, it works out, you know, they, and sometimes, you know, it's funny because they tell me, well, you know, I don't know. I never click on the ads, you know, I, I, um, I don't think, I don't think our city or our area would work. I don't think it could work. Well, I, I mean, I just uh, straight up tell them, well, listen, um, if you don't think it worked, how did you end up on this call? How are we speaking right now? And then they stay quiet. And then they realize, man, shoot, they got me, right? Or whatever. That's the power of proof, right. living the philosophy. Right. You prove it in an equation and demonstrate. Yeah. And yeah. I just tell them, how do we get on this call? <laughs> I mean, you know, um, there's, that's when you're kind of doing it right, when you're, speaking to them in the flow base yeah. and you advertise them in a way where it's non, non salesy not pushy because you're providing value and it's value based all the way from the initial contact all the way up until they're a client and you still have to retain them and you have to still keep providing value so yeah. it's a full circle and you know if someone let's say feels uneasy about the word sales you could replace it with conversation what you're doing is you're having a conversation with them so they jump on a call with you, you have a conversation with them. They want to grow their business. You have various services that you can offer to help them grow their business. And you're having a wonderful conversation. So the marketing that you do brings awareness to your product or service. The marketing that you do for them helps bring awareness to the product or service. Then yes. the sales part 
is the conversation. So you helped them with the consultative selling process and you also refined it within your own business, right? Yes, exactly. And, uh, you know, I, I wasn't against sales, but I hear you. Sometimes people, when they hear sales or sales rep or salesman, they get, the people push off, right? Yeah. Maybe they think it's a little sleazy. Maybe it's the it's, way it's done, right? Like, right. It can be done in a way that is off-putting, which is not what I teach nor recommend. Exactly. Nor do I find to be, from my experience, very effective. Exactly. Done in a conversational way where it's, okay, let's explore what is occurring in your business. Then you uncover their needs, their pains, their desires, frustrations, and you provide some solutions and make an offer. Something like that. Very conversation. Like you would have a conversation with your friend or while you're hanging out with your kids conversational and actually do you find that to be more effective when it's very conversational flow based conversation exactly right and that's why I created my communication program that was based on my experience in sales and leadership and deal making and I found to be really effective what what I found to be really effective was the conversational the human connection one-on-one -on -one. we're doing this together that's why I called it the in there what's in it for we you know that thing when sales we used to say what's in it for me <laughs> yeah uh, that's what the yeah. prospect is saying right so i like to say what's in it for we as in we're here having a conversation and if it aligns there will be a proposition and if this proposition works out for you then we'll move forward if you don't feel it works out for you we can further explore it we can refine it right and we will continue down the pathway so is that the kind of approach that you take and also teach your clients? Absolutely. So we call that the discovery introduction phase, right? And, you know, I always tell my team, sales is about leadership at the end of the day. Yeah. Sales is out of your, we don't have sales reps in my company, we have advisors. Because at the end of the day, you're helping someone, someone inquired for a reason. Maybe, maybe it's something that was on our ads, Maybe it was a testimonial on our website. They inquired for a reason. Most likely they have a gap. They have a gap that needs filling. Meaning it's like they're at point A, they're trying to get to point B. There's a gap, whether it's an obstacle, maybe a limited belief, maybe a cash flow issue. Maybe they, for some reason, they're not at point B. And that can go for anything, your personal life, your professional life, your career, your job. We're all trying to, we're all trying to get to a certain point. Our job, it's very simple. Doesn't mean it's, it's easier, or, or, but doesn't make it easy, but we're trying to get them to point B. Throughout the process, we're trying to find out why they're not getting to point B, because if we find out they can get there on their own, great, we let them go. Well, listen, Mr. Bob, it looks like you can get, you have your plan, you, you can get there. I'm just curious, why did you inquire? And then sometimes they stay quiet so, because because you're, you're coming from a place of service. That's something that's very surprising for them. They're expecting to get pitched or, get, you know, uh, get pushed off to a sales rep and do a hard close on them. None of that stuff works. It's very traditional way of selling. We come from a place of service. Once they understand that you genuinely are, have their best interests in mind, you gain their trust. And this, at that point, the sales is, is pretty much seamless and effortless. And you're right, it's all based on that flow-based conversation. And there's a way to do it wrong, there's a way to do it right. Wonderful. So I'd like to get into some nuances. We talked about some nuances in relation to sales. I'd like to get into some nuances in relation to marketing. So what platforms do you advertise on personally to acquire the clients? And also, what platforms do you offer if you feel like uh, if you feel compared to, uh, compelled to share? Sure. Uh, for your clients, where they can advertise, or you do the advertising on behalf. Sure, sure, no worries. So yeah, we're big on paid social. So Facebook is huge for us. Instagram is really big. Um, we have, you know, a virtual assistant that prospects on LinkedIn. Uh, full time, she messages and posts, and we got a lot of inquiries from there. That's more like organic, uh, just more a little bit more automated. But anything visual based, um, paid media. I mean, paid social media is just kind of where we're where we're at with attracting clients. This year, we're gonna probably start playing around with YouTube. 
YouTube is. You know, oh, I'm excited for you. Thank you. That's going to be huge. We're going to open up that channel. And I always tell people, at least when you're starting out, limit it to one channel only. Master that one. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, master that one. And, you know, then move on to different channels, right? But that's that would be my, my recommendation. I love that. You know, once you get mastery in one skill, I find that it's easier to transfer that mastery onto another skill. Yeah. Be it, let's say, for example, you get mastery in learning how to snowboard. <laughs> Th then after that, you learn how to play the musical instrument. Even though that might seem like two different things. Right. There's a process you learn how to learn. You learn about, and that's what I cover in my mind map program. You learn about your style of learning. You learn how to break things down into smaller chunks, work on one thing at a time, what to optimize and so forth. So it's really good not just to learn whatever platform that you're advertising on, but the meta, the learning how to learn, learning how you learn as well. Because then once you have a good level of awareness of both, then when you move into a, another platform, it is significantly easier. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. I mean, we're three, four years into the business and we're barely going into a different channel. So not to say you can't do it sooner, yeah. but I would just, there is... Something to consider, right? So, something to consider. There, there is, there is yeah. a benefit to sticking with something till you get a certain degree of mastery on yep. it. And, and then from there after yeah. that, moving on to something else. Again, you could diversify if you want to. Absolutely. This was the route that you took. That, exactly. and, you know, you built a seven-figure business, so this is based on your practical experience that yeah. has worked really well for you. Exactly. Like We didn't do email marketing until maybe about a year ago. More consistent, like more oh, that's seriously. Interesting. Right. Wow. And so, again, as you grow, you just have more resources and you want to try different channels. So that's... You know, I think early on, if something doesn't work for you right away, so many people are so quick to define a channel. You know what? This doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for my industry. Unless you 100% can prove that and no other industry is is benefiting from that platform, I wouldn't eliminate it so quickly. Most likely, you're just not providing an offer or your messaging is not resonating with your audience. That's probably what's happening. Um, and I'm telling you, like the things people say, you could literally use in your copy to attract them. Uh, and that's something that was profound and helped me a lot. Um, and to answer your second question, for the fulfillment that we do, so we're home services, right? We're need-based. So we necessarily, like let's say if there's a pipe burst in your home, you're a, you're a homeowner with a family, you're not necessarily going to go to Facebook or Instagram and kind of look for solutions. You're going to go to Google. And you're going to look for uh, pipe, bur pipe burst in my home near me or uh, finding work, you know, plumbers or con contractors near me, right? So because of that, our fulfillment system is pretty simplified, and we use Google Ads for all our fulfillment. So you just kind of need to find what's working for your industry. And guess what? Whatever niche you're in, most likely has it really it's most likely there's going to be a few competitors or there's going to be people already doing that and that's okay you can find other avenues to make it better have a different have the, have a different uh, unique selling proposition usp um but the you know you can look at your competitors to kind of know what they're doing for fulfillment or whatever you need so i'm a huge component a huge uh you know advocate for just copying what works because that you know, that hasn't really, I mean, that, that just works. It's already working. Why, why remade the wheel? You know, a wonderful practice I used to do back in the days when I was learning sales and marketing would uh, be that I would reverse engineer to see how I came to my buying decisions. Like, why did I buy those running shoes? Why did I buy that t-shirt, that car? Why did I go to that restaurant? If I could reverse engineer and have fun with it and see you know, if you can track back the different marketing, the conversations, the sales that happened, you can see what is working to convert you from being someone that did, had no awareness of this product or service existing to then having a conversation with the sales teams, et cetera, 
and then buying the product or service. So you're saying that this is everywhere, happening all around you. It's happening in your industry with others that are offering product or service, and you can observe that, you're saying that, you can observe what they're doing, and then you can connect some dots, and it can be very helpful, it'll fast track your results. Is that what you're saying? Exactly right. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't hurt to copy from the beginning. You, I mean, not exactly word for word, maybe get inspired from it. Yeah, because there's nuances, right? Because if you yeah. may copy something verbatim yep. and doesn't work, one might conclude that it doesn't work. But yep. there are some nuances that are related to other elements that are not kept into consideration. But if you get a good framework and you have that to work with, then those nuances in relation to your particular product or service or your audience dealing with you and they would like to work with you because they personally feel a connection with you, you can adjust those nuances in a way that's resonant and authentic to you. Absolutely. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. I mean, look at, there's, there's so many examples. I mean, um, look at Liquid Death, right? They came into the water space, which is, you would think, oversaturated, over competitive, no way to get in, and they happen to get in and actually get a, take away a big market share and grow to a huge evaluation. I forgot the number. I'll just see someone do that with salt or sugar. Yeah. That's another. Yeah, there you someone go. Someone can do it, right? There you go. Yeah. And what did they, they do? They, tar they, tar they called it, they called it something cool. Uh, they are targeted to a very specific audience, not everybody, you know? And so, I mean, I don't think, I don't think uh, competition exists. I don't think oversaturation is, exists. Yeah, something can be oversaturated, like an industry, but you could cut through the noise depending on how bold your offer is and how your messaging resonates with people. And believe me, if you work on those, you can cut, you can, you can make an impact and have a voice in, this, in any space. Wonderful insights. So we talked a bit about marketing and sales and we could talk for decades about each of those from your experience. I'd like to talk more about now operations. So how big is your team? We are now, I think, 21, 22 full times. So we're you know we're not crazy big, but there we're we're up there. And uh, what are the different responsibilities of your team that you have? You have uh, can you share with us the different positions? Yep. Yeah. So we have an account management department that handles like. A, that takes care of our clients, retention, client um, management, relationship building. You know, they're our team, very, very solid team. I'm very proud of them. Uh, you know, we're able to, you know, their job is to make sure that they communicate with the clients, they go over the reports, their performance, their campaigns. They're pretty much their client success coaches to our clients, making yeah. sure that they're happy, deal with any issues, uh, anything that, that our clients need, they're, they're, our go, they're their go-tos for that. Um, we have the sales department, which includes appointment setters. Uh, they're our advisors, right? Um, they're pretty much the first contact point that our clients get to meet. Um, very, very important. They go through the discovery process. You know, We give them a custom plan that we go over with each of our clients, depending on their needs, and their job is to enroll increase revenue for the company and get clients, right? Um, and then I would say we have, um, I have an operations person, um, you know, uh, she's, you know, she's been with me for a long time. She's great, uh, you know, huge, huge asset to the company. Um, and then we have our admin department that, you know, does all the little things that make the whole engine and, you know, uh, vehicle go smoothly. Uh, like contracts, uh, emails, landing page setups, account setups for our clients. You know, uh, we have our fulfillment department, you know, which actually does the ads for our clients. Uh, you know, we have uh, a design team. We have a, a in-house web developer, actually, we just hired on. He's really, really good. And so uh, our graphic designer does all, their, all, all our ads, the creatives, my videos, uh, post makes content for our social media profiles five times a week. Uh, I, I would say that sums it up. And there's maybe, there's probably some contractors we use every now and then that's project-based, but that that's pretty much our company. That's wonderful. Yeah. 
And so operations, talk about sales, talk about marketing, innovation, coming up with new ideas. You've got some new ideas that you guys came up with, probably a lot of times through the sales, through the marketing, because you get a lot of research there too, and also through the operations, the fulfillment. Is that fair to say you get insights from your operations, your sales, yep. your marketing, as yep. well as you know masterminding and reading and so forth? Uh, what are some innovative ideas that you're looking to see in place for this next year that you've come up with? Yeah, I think I'm really looking to put in those exponential levers in our company. What are, and that it's not from a place of laziness, but what are like the most efficient revenue producing levers we can pull with the least amount of energy and work, right? Trying to work smart maybe partnering up and doing joint ventures with indirect competitors. For our space, that's maybe equipment manufacturers. Maybe that's working with adjusters because we work with, you know, when, it, when a damage happens to a home, we have to, uh, insurance gets involved, right? Those guys know a lot of restoration business owners, right? Now I'm trying to think of like, how do we partner and work with people in our industry that indirectly works with our clients that we want Wonderful. And I think it can be a very mutual, beneficial uh, relationship if done correctly. It is. So instead of, you know, because I tell my team, like the most expensive, like the most expensive thing we, we do is client acquisition. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of labor, and it's capital intensive to acquire a new client versus retaining a client and maybe increasing lifetime value, which is something we need, we want to also uh, improve. But now it's about stepping outside this box and not being so linear mm. and uh, just really thinking, look, how can we work with people who are already working with our clients? Yeah, relationships is key. Exactly. I mean, that's how I built my IT business. It was through referrals. Right. That's how I built my consulting pra practice was through joint ventures and referrals. And so I'm so happy to hear that you guys are now incorporating that in there. So you did paid advertising and you also realized that you have all these relationships that have built, been built. And you could do partnership deals, joint ventures, and that's exciting. That's very innovative. So innovation in relation to your marketing and sales and internal. And then there's also innovation to what can be offered as products or services. Do you have any new offerings that you're excited about or perhaps in the future are going to consider? Yeah, so we, you know, what we've done and developed so far has worked very well for our space. It's not so much offers, but now we're building a new division that pretty much duplicates the formula we have we found success in for this industry and now moving it in different verticals. Oh, that's exciting. Um, so you built a system with this right. business and now you're gonna move into another vertical replicating this. What, uh, do you mind sharing what the vertical is? Oh, it's fine, yeah. So we're gonna, we're gonna start with HVAC. We're gonna, we're gonna you know, again, it's, if, you know, it's uh, very early stages, but we're finding out, you know, the proof of concept, kind of what I talked about, finding that messaging that resonates with them. Uh, just because we're pretty skilled with ads, we've already got lead flow coming in. Then we're gonna move on to plumbing, maybe perhaps roofing when it's a little bit warmer, like in the spring. Um, so we're very excited. I mean, those industries alone are in the multi billions. Um, the total TAM is huge, 10X what we are used to. So potentially our 20 person team can essentially double, if not maybe more this year, just because we have a huge addressable market now. And so it's a very exciting time. I'm, I'm really excited. You know, I wanna ask you also about leadership, but I know we also covered leadership in the last conversation, which I'm gonna include in this video. So we won't go there as much. Another point is the finance. How important is it to track your finances? Cause this is one of the things I always encourage for entrepreneurs, it made a big, uh, let's say, difference in my ability to produce success. That's why in my entrepreneurial program, I include these calculators in finance. Uh, how do you relate to that? Yeah, I think. Because you want to know where your money is going, exactly. you know, how much you're coming in, you want to project, and you want to plan accordingly, especially when you're budgeting for ads, right? So yep. please, how do you relate to that? Yeah, I think like you, you mentioned the spreadsheet uh, model one time, which I think was a very good, simple way of managing your finances, yeah. right? To get started. To get started. I think at a business level, right, you you have a little bit more cogs in the system. Yeah. You kind of need a little bit more robust. 
But uh, what I say, my spreadsheet is pretty. Did I show you that spreadsheet? Yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. It can it get a good. person to a good level of success. And okay. actually, okay. I still use it till this day, but it's just gotten more complex as you add more nuances to it. But right. then there are software and yeah. different things you can do. You can even just uh, outsource that over to an accountant True. who you trust that will take care of everything for you. So how do you do it? Yeah, so we have a bookkeeper that handles all our financials. You know, at the at the end of the month, I get um, our P and Ls. I get uh, detailed balance sheets and all that. Um, you know, I think having weekly, you know, having weekly uh, just updates of kind of where you're at with your cash flow, with your expenses, is gonna you know just make you a little bit more aware. Um, and so. You know, we just keep an eye on that and we just make sure the percentages are staying healthy when it comes to net uh, profit, when it comes to what's your total, you know, percentage with payroll based on gross revenue. So having your finger on the pulse, having your finger on the pulse, knowing that if, you know, if you have a few years into the business already, knowing when the downtrends come, not to, you're not going to feel it so much because it's going to be expected and um, you know it's just really knowing your numbers that way when you have yearly goals you can break it down break them down quarterly so you'll know by end of q1 are you on pace are you not and then you can and then you just reduce that down to monthly hell even weekly but that's probably too small i like looking at monthly quarterly quarterly ones for annual goals and then you adjust and you assess at that point Wonderful. Thank you very much, Ed. A wonderful wisdom. And we can talk for decades on this. Where Ed has so much wisdom, experience, practical from building his business. We have something called divergent and convergent thinking. Divergent thinking is seeing things from many different perspectives. We can call that creative thinking, coming up with all kinds of ideas, brainstorming. And convergent thinking is when you come up with a single, well-established solution with whatever creativity arises. So we could look at it as sequential thinking and very dynamic and expansive thinking. When an endomite is released, what happens is you experience lateral thinking. I call it lateral being in which it reconciles. And then a person is purposeful. They're going somewhere. They're taking it in a certain direction, but they're also doing it very creatively. Yeah. They're coming up with very creative solutions right. to whatever challenge or whatever business opportunity rapidly. Right. That is facilitated partially by this anandamide neurotransmitter. That's why being in flow is so helpful for business building, relationships, personal life, because having a steady release of anandamide is actually facilitating all this creativity all this practical application for the creativity. So a person then appears to be very creative and also very practical, we could say. Someone that could take the creative ideas and produce solutions in entrepreneurship. Creative ideas executed upon creating products and services that are beneficial for people. So you could say, Ed, there's a method to my madness, and there always is. <laughs> When I always say make flow a priority, right? this is why I say it. It's not just because, oh, it's fun to be in flow. It is fun to be in flow. It's also very productive to be in flow. It's also very effective for whatever application. Like you're going to progress way more in snowboarding. When you snowboard, you know when you're in the flow, right? Right. You feel it. How do you, you know, what's your best way of finding how you go into flow. Let's say maybe because you're in, you've been in the flow for a long time, you don't know what it feels like to be out of flow. But for those days where maybe things aren't going as well or flow breakers perhaps, how do you go back into flow? What are some good tips or I don't know, how do you go back into it? Is there like a, like a, a mind hack you can do in the mornings or what's your what's your way to either physically or emotionally jolt yourself back into state so I believe in having a list of various flow enhancer activities various activities that you know personally that get you into the flow for me it's conversations with people 
that's one meditation going for walks and even walks in certain areas going for drives and even drives in certain areas snowboarding going for a run stuff that makes you happy or yes happiness keeps you, keeps is, you present in the current moment yeah you you develop and i recommend everyone to also develop a sensitivity for flow you can develop a sensitivity so that you know when you're experiencing the another mind release you can develop a sensitivity so that you know by the way is it four or five south or no yeah. south yeah. south yeah you develop a sensitivity to know when you're starting to flow. Like, for example, let's say having a conversation with someone, right? Like, we're having a conversation right now. If there's a part of you that feels a little stuck in your head about how you look when you say something or a little bit of overthinking, it might not be as flow-based. However, if you embrace that, you say, you know what, that's totally fine. I'm cool with it you'll actually relax and ease into more of a fluid conversation. Then when you're having this fluid conversation, you start to feel the flow. You start to feel at ease. You start to feel comfortable. You start to feel it in the body, and then also you'll start to notice you'll have creative ideas like mastermind. That sensitivity right there, allows you to know if you're in the flow or if you're not. If you're not, you know what to do next or not do next to ease yourself back into the flow. How do you relate to that? Absolutely. I mean, I think what you said, like, over time, you do develop a sensitivity towards it. Yeah. And I think earlier when you asked, you know, hey, you, 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 you seem, you feel like you're more in the flow state, even though, ironically, I'm working a little bit more um, it's helped, it's helped knowing, identifying your flow stoppers. And even though my work has increased a little bit more, finding time and doing something that you really love and focusing now more on how you get to where you want to go than the why is important too, more than the what. So it's how we get there now matters more to me than where we're going to go. Where we're going to go is still important as a destination. But mind you, that's if you get there, that's still a small part of the journey because, yes, it's, it's where you're wanting, wanting to go, but the journey is 10 times longer. So you might as well make the journey fun. You might as well make the journey flow-based, um, you know, having some core values that align with you or your team or depending on what you want to do. That, I think, to me, has been the, the game changer. Going to events like the conference I was telling you about, just came back and... That's a flow enhancer, a right? huge flow enhancer. I like that, flow enhancer. Um, there's many flow enhancers, right, you do weekly. Uh, running, or for, for me, running, weightlifting. Um, there's maintenance flow enhancers that you should do, at least I do every day, uh, sleeping well, uh, make sure you're eating whole foods, stuff like that, right? So I think all that st stuff starts to compound. But I think that's now more in my, now I'm more sensitive and aware of that. So now I'm all about is, okay, we're probably going to get to where we're going without sounding arrogant or cocky, because I've done it before. Now, let's just change the way how we're going to get there. Yes, you're running it through that filter. And I, I like how you said, uh, I think you said like big time flow enhancer or something like that. So there's this, yeah. there are big flow enhancers. There are ones that could really bring you into the flow. Let's say you're out of the flow, like you go to one of these events, it's a guarantee you're gonna get back into the flow. Oh, for sure. That one, that one we can call a big one. Yeah, you're right, that's a big one. And then there are these, what you call like smaller ones mm -hmm. for you. And, and by the way, a big one for one person can be a smaller one for another person. That's why, and vice versa. That's why it's key for each person to get to know themselves. Right. And build a relationship with themselves so that they could discover what are the flow enhancers and the flow restrictors. And then uh, adjust accordingly. So if you know that going to one of these events is a big time flow enhancer, then you pepper that into the schedule. Maybe you wouldn't do it every single week, 
but you may consider doing it once a quarter yep. or a handful of times a year. Whatever is enough for you. Yep. That uh, the way I like to look at it is there's your there's peak flows and there's different kinds of flows too. There's flow being in the zone. There's different kinds of flows. And then there is a, uh, you could say, your natural baseline flow. Your day-to-day -day level of flow. Right. If you do one of these events, it spikes up that that uh, homeostasis of flow. Yeah. That's another word we could use for that. I say baseline of flow. So that's that a good one. Baseline? Yeah. Baseline, baseline of uh, flow. Yep. So this baseline can increase mm -hmm. by incorporating events like that or different experiences mm -hmm. or whatever so that you can actually feel each day that your baseline is going higher. So, for example, for me, my baseline is higher this week than ever before in my entire life and was higher last week more so than ever in my entire life. Why? Because I made flow a priority in 2017. And like you, I do events once in a while or whatever that amps up my flow, like just elevates it to another level. And then while I don't always remain in that peak, you might not be in that same peak that you were when you were at that event. Your overall baseline rose up. So now all you got to do is maintain that. Yes, sometimes it might dip, but if it dips lower, just be aware that it's dipped lower and do things to get back to that baseline and then throw in some other peaks. And that could even go even higher. So I find that there's no limit. How do you relate to that? No, absolutely. I think having a compound over time it it takes some effort but also some awareness like you mentioned yeah and i think finding what works for you is important yes you know and that's key and i think so for example now three about to be four years into the business you know i think we talked about this once you kind of now start predicting kind of when maybe your flow or energy maybe a little bit of motivation dips down a little bit yeah so you can kind of put in these things or these events beforehand pre-scheduled so when it does happen you're gonna get back into the flow so for example that's probably taken maybe like a three-day weekend at least once a month yes maybe every other week maybe if that's something that sounds you know that's something that's helping me um once a quarter, definitely do a week-long trip, whether it's a conference or going to, you know, going somewhere, uh, exploring, traveling, traveling. I think you and I can relate with that, with being a huge flow enhancer, right? Yes. Um, so, but usually when you're in, and the key is <clears throat> identifying what that looks like for you and kind of sticking to it, putting it in a calendar, and that way when a time comes, Right when you're kind of feeling, and who knows, if you're feeling good, then maybe you can still maybe keep working. Or if, if anything, even if you're feeling good, I would still take that take that day off or maybe make it a flow enhancer day. Yeah. Because it's just kind of, you feel good for a reason. It keeps compounding, right? Um, funny enough, something that I picked up, I don't know if I told you, but I picked up uh, paintballing, like paintball. Oh, fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's funny because like, you know, half of, you know, I'm, I'm 32, like half, half, half of these, uh, half of everyone there is like kids. Yeah. You know, a lot of adults too, but people take it very seriously. There's a whole, there's a whole world. Like people take yeah. like their, their markers, their guns, their, their tanks. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's a whole world. But the reason why- You show I, up like Rambo? Huh? You show up like Rambo? But no, no. So you know what? Yes, I did yeah. the first time. <laughs> but then you quickly realize, oh wow, the pros don't have any gear on. Yeah. They just have their pods ready to reload, and that's it. Because Why? Because they actually value being flexible and moving fast. Yeah. More than, like, having a full full but gear. this facade. Exactly. <laughs> and you would think. You would think the pros actually have more scoring, more gear. They actually have the least amount of gear. That was one thing. But the reason why I like it is it keeps me present. Uh, I communicate with my team. If you're a good team, you know, I might join a league. Who knows? I'm not there yet. Um, but it, because you're, you're so, you're so present, you can't think of anything else and it forces me to be present. So that's a really good flow enhancer for me. But anyway, pre-schedule like your, 
those days, your flow enhancer days, and I think that's going to be a good, a good tip there. That's a wonderful. You have a you have a flow strategy. You know, and we want to take this approach. Look, perfect example of this is the other day I made a video on my channel, and I posted this clip of where I used to go with some of my friends and I used to also go there and I meditate there. That's a flow enhancing spot, an actual spot in Palos Verdes where for me, I find the flow there or a deeper degree of flow. What's interesting was there was a woman there. She was sitting on this rock and she was reading a couple of books and she, she had this interesting book that was by Rick Rubin, you know, Rick Rubin. Yeah. So I commented on it. I said, Oh, that's, that's a cool book, whatever. And then we started talking and it, so she's an artist, a musician. Uh, a singer and she ends up uh, writing down in her journal a sentence that says something about flow and then I just showed up she's like it's like funny you just mentioned flow I just literally wrote that down in my journal and then you just showed up like literally wow. the moment that she wrote it down I showed up and we were talking about flow we were talking for a good like 15 minutes and she was saying that's my priority this year is to uh, essentially staying in my flow because whenever I stay in my flow, I put out my best music. Mm -hmm. and, and she was saying, you know, she's talking about some of the challenges that she was having and essentially how you came up with the strategy. She was in the earlier stages of coming up with the strategy. It reminds me actually when I was in Mexico and I made flow a priority and then I then embarked on a journey to, of self discovery as to what the flow enhancers were, what the, flow restrictors were and actually come up with a strategy like you did to know thyself and to implement things something systematic something spontaneous but whatever you know it could come down to the food you eat how much water you drink where you live like how close you are to the beach all these little nuances they add up why this is important because consider this she knows the difference between when she's in flow and the kind of music she produces and when she's not in flow and the kind of music she produces. I know the distinction between when I'm in flow and the kind of content I create. And right. if I was not in flow, the kind of content that I would create. And then also the fact that I never run out of ideas. People always ask me, how do you never run out of ideas? You always have you put together three videos a week. You always have <laughs> stuff to talk about. It's because when you stay in the flow, mm. you channel the source. Literally, it's a one-way communication. Oh, not one-way. It's like a two-way communication, I'd say. It's a one-way as in you receive downloads. Conversation that's happening with God. Right. When you're in flow. How do you... You're getting the creativity, the inspiration. Yeah. And so, consider this. This world that appears is what I call made up of past beliefs. Like these are all past beliefs externalized. Like anything that we've created as human beings... How we live is what we've imagined in the past. This is the manifestation of it. So what we're doing is we're bringing forth more that already exists in God's creation into existence by being the conduit. While you're in flow, you're the conduit. Creative ideas show up. You manifest those ideas. You move on to the next one, the next one, the next one. And you transform the world. So what is the challenge or what could be the challenge we could say is as i had mentioned to you earlier what do you believe do you believe in the past playing out in which we're further identifying with that is not harmonious right to evolution or to uh, divine inspiration however you want to look at it or are you honoring your intuition and creativity and imagination and uh, aspects of existence that have not been seen into physical existence and being the conduit for that expression. Uh, how do you relate to that? Well, I definitely don't think that dwelling on the past uh, helps yeah. at all. And where do we dwell in the past, right? So like, let's say you say something to me and then something within me uh, polarizes to what you said. Right. In which, let's say you said something to me and then I felt insecure about what you said. Right. What is it? Is it you making me feel insecure? No. You're not doing anything. You're, you're sharing with me a conversation. It's a me within myself 
identifying with a certain belief or a story from my past mm. in which I'm recreating it or replicating it some shape or form in our conversation now. The person can trigger the something though. The person whether they've whether it's intentional or unintentional. But you're saying that still it comes to you and yourself with how you yeah. feel and what meaning you bring behind what was said or what 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 was triggered emotionally or in your thoughts. Yeah, so the way I like to relate to it is I take the full responsibility for whatever triggering occurs. Extreme ownership. Yeah. yeah. And why we do this or why I recommend doing this is because that way I don't point fingers. Right. Because if I start pointing fingers externally, I'm just replaying that past scenario. Yep. You know, yep. it could turn into a dispute, an argument, resentment. Yep. Now I'm imagining you in a not an ideal way. Yeah. And then, yep. it, then it restricts my flow. And then next thing you know, we're having... So you, you know what really helps me in those situations? Yeah. Something I learned recently is that instead of comparing yourself to others or the other guy who's make, he's got a business or money or that guy who, or that person who seems like they have everything in, in place, like, yeah. you know, whatever that is, um, I try to think of the two me's and that's... That's um, so that I carry around, and I think everyone should do this. Carry around a photo of yourself that reminds you of what your whatever photo that represents your childhood. Yeah, whatever that is. And then hell, maybe with AI, you get put like a future version of yourself too. Who knows? Maybe I'll do that in the future. Um, but there's two me's I think of. I think of I think of the the younger version of myself, where I'm like, man, you know, I'm. Th um, I think of meeting that person. It's like, man, I've come a long way. Um, I owe it, you know. I, I need, you know, I need to. It's a reminder of where I come from. So it's, a, it's that's gratitude. And then I picture an older version of myself. Your, your level up version. Your level yeah. two version. Whatever that is, for you. And you kind of, you, you kind of play with this visualization of you meeting that person, and it's really. Uh, like it, it enhances your psyche and it gives you way more self love. I would definitely try it, but then have your future version of you thank you. It's like you know what, I I know you're kind of going through it, or we're exposing some things right now, or we're learning a lot together. But if it wasn't for you, your present you, then I wouldn't be here right now. Yes, and that mind shift, wow, and that was something like um. Uh, a, th a hypnotherapist of mine ran through some scenarios with that and when you kind of come out of that and you come back to that man anything else that anybody says or I mean it just that stuff just simmers over who cares uh, the only person you have to worry about and your past you you can't change that person all you can do is love them and forgive and forgive them if anything between now and then has happened nothing in this at the end of the at the end of the day it's not your fault but the future you, you could, you want that person to be there in that state. So it's your responsibility, and you got to do it for that person. You got to do it for future you. I don't know if that makes sense. But oh, it makes a lot of sense. That when that when I went through that exercise, that's one. Boy, I, that's when I felt so aligned and felt such an inner, deep, almost love and joy for myself and for the journey and ambition. Man, very powerful. I highly recommend it. That's wonderful. That is a Thank great you. way of doing it. You know, uh, how I relate to that is it brings you into the present. Yeah. It's now is where all the power is. It anchors you into the present by relating harmoniously to what appears as the past and who you imagine yourself to be ideally, which you refer to as the future self, right? It anchors you into the now, into a deep peace, and whatever you imagine now, what you think feelingly upon now, impresses the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind being impressed by that. By the way, you brought up superconscious mind. I want to talk about that actually. Oh yeah. So superconscious mind, I consider that the mind of God. Oh. In uh, which that uh, everything we draw upon as far as creativity, inspiration, that which appears here was sourced from the superconscious. Is that the same as the infinity intelligence? Yes. Okay. I consider it. 
Now, this is where we get into nuances because some might consider it, I like to reconcile. Right. So for me and my view of spirituality is everything arises from God, mm. appears and is appeared animated by God. Because in the Bible it says, uh, with him all things were made, and some, I'm paraphrasing now, without him nothing was made that has been made. So essentially, and I don't see it as a guy, it's just how they refer to it in the Bible, but essentially God. Energy, maybe. Yeah. Or, uh, inner being. And so that's a good point as well. It's, we want to, I recommend building our own relationship with the word God. Yeah. So my relationship with because the when word, people hear that, yeah, I'm not like a super religious person, but some people may tune out because then yeah. it's like, oh man, what's what's this? Is this gonna be preachy? Is he gonna start saying look, uh, God, uh, praise Jesus? You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's your? Because when I hear that, I think people mean well. They probably, but they probably mean the affinity intelligence. Maybe they mean uh, the. The, the, the source, whatever that is, the power source, right? That's kind of what I, how I interpret that. Yes. And so whatever, like when you mean the connection to the super consciousness, where everything comes from. Like, exactly. And that's, all that appears. That's what I mean. That's what, that's yeah. what I interpret when I hear God. It's like, yes. okay, I, I, I understand you. Yes. And so everything arises from and animates and appears as, as an emanation and where is this occurring? It's occurring through you. Like you have your individual experience and you imagine things into existence or imagine that it's gonna be a certain way. And that leaves an impression on the subconscious aspect of mind, which is a part of you that stores, let's say the slides that you wanna see play out. Like you, when you take a snapshot of something, you visualize something or you imagine the way you are ideally, like that future self, it leaves an impression on your subconscious mind. And then some way, somehow, it's brought into manifestation. Right. That's the power of God. We may or may not understand it to a high degree. That's, uh, even in the Bible, it says, uh, your ways are not my ways. Heavens are higher than the earth. What that means is that we trust that by leaving an impression on the subconscious mind of how we would like it to be ideally, that some way, somehow, it'll manifest. You'll be guided. You'll know what to do. Someone will show up in unexpected ways. You essentially remain in the flow. And then you are some way go down a series of events that lead to the manifestation. If you look at your business, it happened that way. You had an impression in your subconscious mind. You said, I am that person. I'm that version of Ed. And then some way, somehow, you know, you did things. You appeared to do things. It was an interactive experience. It's not like you just forced yourself to sit on the couch all day long. Yeah, you were going through a series of events and inspiration showed up, people showed up, you did this movie, that, you did that move. And you know, at times it could have been challenging because that's the mind purification, that's the identification of the belief where you applied that particular uh, technique that you just mentioned. And then what happens is that it, it purifies that, those, those beliefs from the subconscious mind. And then it's like every moment now, you're taking the responsibility to imagine yourself ideally leave an impression in the subconscious mind and have that play out moving forward. How do you relate to that? Is that what you're referring to? Exactly. I would just try to get clear on what that meant more, but absolutely. And superconscious. Right. So the subconscious aspect of the individual mind is in direct communication with the superconscious, or we could say infinite intelligence. Because one might think we're these little islands walking around. Okay, there's Ed, he's sitting there, and I'm sitting here. <clears throat> this is all interconnected. This is all one interconnected consciousness. Yes. It may appear through our own beliefs that we are separate. Yes. Which is fine for, let's say, in certain regards for physical experience. Like, okay, that's Ed's body, and this is my body, and we're playing this role. We're going to San Diego. Yeah. We're playing out a, a journey, which is fine for yep. the human experience. Yep. Yet at a deeper level, it's all interconnected. Yes. So that interconnectedness is what the superconscious takes care of to bring into manifestation that vision. Like you might get an idea to call this person up. Like I'm going to introduce you to Ruben. Uh, you played a role in that. 
you might not have said, well, Joseph, they introduced me to Ruben. Right. But some way, somehow, that could be connected to something related to your future goals and vision. And mm-hmm. perhaps Ruben's future goal and vision. Mine, as well, I already see some connections. Just like, for example, when I introduced you to my friend, Rob. I just had this feeling that you guys should meet. I was thinking, oh. Yeah, these I like guys, that. These guys, I got to introduce you to these guys. <laughs> and, then, and then I introduced you guys, and you guys ended up clicking, right? Yeah, you never know what happens. Yeah. Um, I think Michael Singer has a great quote. I think, and I'm paraphrasing. It's not the exact quote, but he says something in terms of there's two types of people in the world. There's, there's the there's the person who thinks nothing is interconnected. Then there's the person who thinks that everything is. That's it. That's it's, an interesting perspective. Yeah. Uh, because, because but intended, it makes the world a difference. Because yeah, if I see myself as a little island. Right. Then I'm going to behave and think differently. Exactly. From a very logical perspective, right? From, let's say, the unseen perspective, I might not be allowing myself to access some of the technology or that was already there in existence. So in other words, how is that experience practically is, uh, from my experience, is, first of all, there's a lot of faith. There's a lot of trust. You're like, you know what? Some way, somehow, it's going to work out because... Even if I'm thinking this right now, and uh, I'm, I'm essentially like I'm thinking that things are going to work out, yeah. Some way, somehow, this is getting broadcasted out to different people. There's, they're picking up on it. There's a sense of relief at that. Yeah. And I think Michael Singer talks about letting go. Yeah. I think it's that. It's not so much as I'm not going to do anything or things will come to me, but more like you know what? I have faith in this super consciousness that something or someone will align with my path here and what i'm going through and it'll it'll always work out yes and there's some there's some peace in that that i have found that now i can sleep a little bit better at night now because knowing that there's this interconnectedness and things always work out absolutely by the way i'm so glad we're recording this because I mentioned in the video that I recorded earlier, which I'm probably going to put on my channel, that yeah. I have some of the best conversations with friends and clients while, even since, ever since growing up, the most transformative conversations while driving. For sure, oh, yeah. Even when I'm by myself, I talk to myself like this. <laughs> yeah, like just like this, legit, yeah. I talk to myself. And I get all these insights, all these perspectives, all these downloads, like what's happening yeah. here, the mastermind. I think creativity happens best when you're not forcing it. Yes. When you're not actively trying to solve a problem. Flow, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's super consciousness, right? Uh, we allow it to happen. We allow. So where are we not allowing is a clue as to, you know, for example, I can experience where I'm not allowing it to happen when I'm tense. And again, no shame and condemnation. We can release the tension. Just, you know, right. relax, meditation, go for a walk, something like that. Overthinking, again, no shame and condemnation. Just stop thinking for a moment. Just sit, be still. Emotional reactivity or... Because emotions are energy in motion. And how we relate to emotions is how we experience emotions. So if we let the emotions be, then we're not trying to suppress or suppress or label them in some negative way and then forming beliefs around that. Let it, letting it be, we essentially relax and things play out. Yep. Things happen. How does it happen? Sometimes you know, sometimes you don't know. Yep. But there's that sense of peace and relief. And you can do this anywhere. Like right now we're doing this in the car as we're talking about it. Yet you could do this during a conversation with a client, a vendor, a team member, personal life, family, during a conversation. Yeah. You could also do it while you're, while you're by yourself. Even for example, snowboarding, right? Like for example, one of my favorite things to do is just repeatedly do the same run again and again and again, even if I don't see any visible signs of progress. Yeah. I know with certainty that there is going to be progress. You ever, you ever done something where you repeatedly do the same thing 
and then you might not visibly see signs of progress, but then all of a sudden a week later or two weeks later, you're exponentially better? Yeah, it goes with a lot of things, especially when you're new at something, right? Yeah. I think you're learning the most in the very beginning. And it's almost like you don't know what you don't know yet. And it's almost like, you know, uh, like weightlifting, you get the noob, noob gains, right? You get, you get your first year gains really quickly. It does slow down afterwards if you keep going, but you know, I think at that point you're already hooked on it. You're, looking, you're hooked on the progress. Uh, so I think that goes with anything. And you know, that's why I believe it's key to value the journey as much as you value the destination. Yes. What I mean by that is the destination, like you bought your dream car, your first dream car. It was an exciting moment but it was a moment, it was literally a moment. Right. Where you grabbed the keys, you started it up and you drove it for the first time. Yes, you enjoy every moment with it. Yeah. But that destination was one moment. Exactly. The many decades leading up to it, all the dedication. It reminds me of that, you ever seen that Porsche commercial? I gotta send it to you. <laughs> of this little kid when he's in the classroom and he's uh, dreaming of this Porsche. He sees this Porsche drive outside and then he's, uh, he's dreaming of it and he's visualizing it and then he goes to a dealership and then he asks if he can sit in one and then he tells the uh, dealer, the, the sales rep, I'll see you in 10 years or something like that. And so the whole uh, point of the, the commercial was uh, to those that really appreciate, it's the you know 10 or 15 or 20 years in between the moment you envision yourself driving a Porsche and then when you finally manifest it, that, that 10 or 20 years in between. Sounds awesome. Of, you know, building the business, whatever. So that and was it, emphasizing that. Yeah. yeah. And it's just a byproduct too, yeah. right? I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's great to have these, these goals and they're, they're amazing. You should not shy from it whatsoever. But it's also dangerous if that's your only, I mean, you know what? No, I don't think it's dangerous, but I think like, for example, when I enter a new business venture, my goal is never, hey, let's make as much, the goal is never, the North Star goal is not make as much money as possible. That's gonna be a byproduct of what we're really gonna be doing. And that's the value, whether that's helping a certain industry or bring, you know. Like Earl Langell said in The Stranger Secret, that was one of the nuggets. Yeah. Money is a yardstick for measuring your service. Yep. yep. And it is. Yardstick for measuring success, you could say oh, too. Success, yeah. Um, me measuring maybe how many how many people you've helped. Yes. So that's the thing too. It goes back to all of that. It's feeling all of that's part of the abundance and feeling interconnectedness. Yeah. And for those who don't, there's two types of people, right? And I go I go back to that. That was such a powerful statement because it it kind of encapsulates people not by race, not by how much money they make just more of like, do they believe that this is connected or not? Because that tells you a lot about a person. Yes. And every single, every time, so when I, when I went to the conference and I spoke with a lot of very successful people, they were all float based. They all believe that they're interconnected and it's at least for uh, to yes. some degree, it's, there's no way you can kind of get that flow without, without believing that. Yes. So there was nobody that. Because when you're flowing, you're, right. you're a conduit. Right. You've released identification to all these beliefs. And you start identifying that with others. And it's like, oh, you know what? This guy's not really in that flow state. Um, it's fine. He's got his, his journey, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to more, I'm going to, you know, attract more people in the flow. So that's, that's kind of what I want. Yes. And you do, you attract more people in the flow that are in the flow and thus what happens, this is wonderful, is you have wonderful connections, collaborations, team initiatives, masterminding. I believe that flow is our natural, authentic way of being. Now, as mentioned, there's degrees of flow. There's different kinds of flow. Just flow in general is our natural, authentic way of being as the conduit of divine expression, the conduit of the superconscious. Because then what happens, and I've seen this many times, and I trust you've seen it as well, many practical examples of this, is when you're around people that are in the flow, it's spirit of harmony, and then everybody plays a theatrical, harmonious role towards the actualization of the vision. So a team 
in business that is in the flow, the entire team that's in the flow, is gonna make their moves ideally. Like let's say one person's a graphic designer, they're in the flow with the marketing professional. Then you have someone that's doing the uh, finances, they're in the flow and relating harmoniously with everybody else. Like no one's trying to stifle or control or diminish another person's flow, but everyone's contributing to the flow. The owner of the business is focusing on their initiatives. The one that takes care of whatever aspect of the business, they're focusing on that. And it's like one big dance happening. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> right. So what's happening is everyone is being the conduit of divine expression and connected to the superconscious. Now this also scales out, not just the business, but who the business is involved with, the clients, the vendors, other people in that space, the harmonious connections. For example, I don't believe in competition in business. I believe there's always room for collaboration because to have that idea of competition in that way where it is essentially me versus is to imply separation. There's always collaboration. And this can sound even more, let's, let's say grandiose, but I don't consider it grandiose. I've had experiences of this. I believe this is what we're going towards heaven on earth essentially heaven on earth, like what's more grandiose than that, right? But it's not grandiose, it's, it's quite like, if, if everybody, and if we can facilitate everybody to be the conduit of divine expression or to a large degree, more and more people, we'll see more harmony between personal relationships, business relationships, friendships. How do you relate to that? Well, I think that's gonna bring on more harmony Harmony attracts harmony. Yeah. And it just goes back to, you know, that, what do you call it? Maybe certain frequencies people are at. You could, you don't just know it, you feel it. And it's not something you can fake. I think that's the ultimate indicator. Yes. Of someone either being genuine or, you know, even if you're not, let's say like a business owner, people still can still sense that. Yeah. Hey, is this person like being genuine or not? Right. Yes. Um, it's a it's a feeling of hey. After I hang out with this person, do I feel like hanging out with them again? Yeah. It's a simple question. Yes. Like an interview question, I always or not an interview question I ask, but something I ask myself after I interview someone. You know, I think they call it the elevator or the airport rule. Of, yeah. Hey, do, if I'm stuck in an elevator with this person for two hours. Well, I look forward to it or not, right? Am I gonna be, if I'm stuck with this person at the airport for two hours, am I gonna enjoy that or am I not? Uh, it's a very simple, effective baseline question of like, can't, you know, when you work with people, you're gonna be working with them for a long time. Yeah. So sometimes, depends, but most likely, I actually look at that more than I do at skills. Yeah. And I love that you said that. One of the reasons why I believe uh, that is powerful is because each person has wonderful potentialities and gifts that are distinct to them, that are in harmony and contribution to everybody. Like think of a music, like a band, right? One person's a drummer, the other person's a bass guitarist, the other person's lead vocalist another person plays another instrument and they love that instrument and together there's a music like there's a there's a band that's playing music and it's in perfect harmony so when you allow someone to be that authenticity and naturalness of their talent is allowed to express again conduit from the divine expression from the superconscious in a way that's in harmony and in contribution and so, by the way, I'm glad we're recording this because this is the kind of stuff that we talk about when we do our sessions, right? Like That's a one-on-one. -on -one. So I, I like that and relate that to coaching, consulting, mentorship, leadership, is the student and teacher are one. We can learn knowledge and expertise from each other because we've had, let's say, different experiences in life, or maybe we had one experience for a longer duration. Yet when the uh, learning and teaching and mentorship is occurring, 
I recommend actually neutralizing all that and bringing it into the present now center of we are one uh, as a as a you could call it a, a way of being from which the conversation arises naturally to be beneficial to you and be beneficial to me. And let's say I am consulting with you. My intention is for it to be beneficial to you. So what ends up happening is that the questions are asked, the discussions are had in which whatever you're looking for, you receive. It's a nuanced point. Uh, how do you relate to that? Yeah, I mean, it, I think sometimes there's a reason why we say that in our sessions or repeat, and it goes back to the principles. And it's yeah. funny because out of all the things, and it's something I've learned a lot about you is, you know, all all roads point to flow. <laughs> and almost like, you know, I think there's a thing where they say, if you keep, I think if you keep clicking on like Wiki, uh, Wikipedia pages, like within with like you go i think there's a thing where it goes back to like um you know like their directory right their huge directory it goes back to multiple links and pages and all this stuff yeah but in the end i think they say um and i might be meffing this up but it's like all pages almost go all, they all go back to philosophy like in wikipedia right there's certain there's certain yeah. principal truths that happen and i think for us um and it's i think it's a it's a view, it's a lens, at least for me to go through your worldview, that's like, oh, interesting. Joseph philosophy goes back to flow for everything. And for someone in my shoes, it's more of like, all right, it's another mental model. It's another tool to kind of use. Is that the universal one? I'm not sure, yeah. but that's something that I can play with. It's like, you know what? It has served me well. It's definitely in my toolbox, right? That I can yeah. kind of come back to and it, it's done well. I'm really I'm glad still, I got to honor you and congratulate you for thinking for yourself. Well, thank you. I for would sure. never want what I'm saying to be a dogma or the only way or the absolute way. Right. Even right. if I sound that, very excited about it. Now that you yeah. do, but yeah, that but that gives, yeah. that to me gives me, okay, that's something to consider. Maybe yeah. to kind of try out, maybe try this lens for a second, right? Yes. But ultimately, you know, I'm still... Because that's flow based in itself. Exactly. What? I tried it. <laughs> yeah, that's flow based Thanks to you. Uh, and I think that's what you should do. You should kind of try on different lenses and see, hey, does this work for me? Does this, yeah. does this align with me with goals and everything? And, and it's great. So, I mean, I think, but, you know, it does go back to, uh, it all roads point back to flow. It's not a bad thing. I think it's a great thing because... Who would I want to have flow every single second of their lives? Yeah. Business, personal, relationships, um, when you're out, spending time with your kids, your family. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's wonderful. You know, and uh, you've embraced it. How did you embrace it in your business, personal life, flow? Well, I had a lot of trouble in the beginning, right? Um, I think the stress got to me. Uh, sometimes it, you know, I think last year was a, was a big year for me with kind of dealing with problems with like anxiety after a long time. If, if you feel comfortable, you can share that story. If not, um, it's just more, it's more about like, you know, so last year, you know, the business wasn't doing, wasn't doing too well. Um, you know, that's, and, that's according to Ed's standards <laughs> and, and that's fine. It was the beginning. So. But this, this, this is kind of where yeah. I'll build up to because this year and the majority of last year, I definitely leveled up to becoming a better leader. Yes. And I think having a solid team, increasing the, the bar of standards that you have um, elevates you and sometimes kind of forces you to become a better leader or it doesn't and then you lose your team which kind of happened to me like early, what's that, uh, 2020, 2022, or late 2022. And so the year kind of started a little rocky, you know, uh, either my, for example, my sales team was either poached or I kind of, we had, a, I let them go. But at the end, when I look back, it wasn't due to their performance. I mean, it was, but like with anything, I like to take extreme ownership. So I was like, man, I, I blame, oh, I, I blame myself. Like I could have done better. But you know what? 
now I'll zone add one more thing to that. Sure, sure. Um, I personally would not use, and I get what you're saying with it. But I'm very selective with words, of course, because it could imply a lot of things that could be helpful or not helpful. Um, I personally wouldn't say blame. What I would say is, uh, and, and again, you might be implying this, but I would like to be very precise for the audience sure. uh, as well. We take responsibility, and by responsibility, it's simply to imagine ideally. Remember, we're one with the superconscious. We might not know what ways and hows it's going to manifest. All we do is, you know, I can't of myself do nothing. The Father within me doeth the work in the Bible. Right. Essentially, you know, I'm not a fan of how it's going right now. I'm going to reimagine this. I'm going to see it differently. The right. moment you see it different, you reimagine it different, and then mm -hmm. you say, that's the way it is. That leaves an impression on the subconscious mind, and it's done for you. And I say this very precisely because sometimes people might think, and I've also thought of this, and maybe, maybe you've thought of this, I'm not sure, I've thought of this in the past, I've thought like this in the past, is when I take responsibility for something, it means I have to force myself to do all this work. And that can, that can feel very heavy for a person especially if like, let's say they're in a really tough situation in their life. They're thinking, oh, you know, now I got to do this and top. Right. Actually, it's all done for you. Right. This is where the, the trust, the faith comes in. We accept in that moment the responsibility like you did perfectly. You accepted the responsibility and you said, I'm now going to see this differently. Uh, is that what you're referring to? I think that's a great reframe. And I think, yeah, I think that's... And why, and why I'm also, so one more thing. Sure. Why I don't want to, or also more accurately, why I'm saying it this way is because I would not want anyone to impress shame, condemnation, not good enough in relation to the word blame on their subconscious mind. Yeah. Rather a lighthearted, I'm going to see it this way. That's yeah. a lot better. Yeah. And thanks for that, Joseph. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Because it does matter. It does matter how I frame things because whether you like it or not, your subconscious will remember how you determined or look at certain things. Yes. So I think that's, I think that's a big, big one there. Um, so the way I chose to look at it was more, you know what? I'm still becoming a better leader. Yes. And I had to kind of go through some of these unfortunate events to become who I am today. And guess what? Maybe by the end of this year or in two years and so on, I look back at them, keep getting better, right? As we yes. grow the team and the company. So to kind of go back to that, you know, it was a difficult time. Um, I, you know, unfortunately had to go through some, you know, uh, anxiety and it was kind of getting to me. If anybody experiencing like that and panic attacks, it's just not, not great, not good at all. So, you know, I think one of the things you told me was this is a reaction. Look at it as, as that, you know, s simply put and taking some time off and really kind of looking at what happened here. Right. I let things get to me a little bit more than I would like to have. And that's acceptance that's that's fine it's at the end of the day it's simply a reaction to stimulus that maybe was good or bad doesn't matter it was still a reaction so that kind of broken down logically for me it's like okay now let's kind of go back to this let's go back focusing on flow state because what happened was i mean if you're dealing with anxiety you you're not in the flow state right it's almost the opposite and so it's kind of taken me on a journey to read on like Michael Singer. I've been on more like meditation retreats. Yes. Focusing more on the spiritual side. Um, I've introduced meditation back into my daily life. That's good. And now it's more of like a maintenance, kind of like it is for like weightlifting or even, you know, like your diet and stuff. And I'm hoping to keep this up and now I'm kind of like you, what you mentioned earlier, building that sensitivity. I think now I'm way, I'm way more ultra sensitive. I was like, you know what? I'm feeling 
Whereas before, when I would feel it, I kind of ignored it and I just doubled down more. When that's kind of where it broke, right? It, it, that's where the system broke. That's when it, it wasn't as, as good as it is now. So now when I'm feeling like, you know what, um, I'm, th- today, this week was pretty, was pretty uh, you know, it was a pretty heavy week. I'm going to take some time off on Monday and maybe enjoy myself. I'm going to go pinballing. Maybe I'm going to spend a day reading. I'm going to go to the beach. Yeah. Um, maybe I'm going to check my mom out for lunch, and that's going to enjoy my day. Maybe spend time with, with a friend. Like, for example, today, what is it? It's, it's Friday. I'm hanging out with you. It's going to be a great, fun day. I'm looking forward to today. Today's going to be fun. Um, and so now it's more in my awareness now. And at the time, it felt... It felt like hell. It was like, man, how is this? How am I going to recoup from this? But, you know, time is the best is the best friend you have. And when you look back, you can kind of see, okay, I I, I've taken the steps to to better myself and not to ever be in that place again. And not, you know, it may happen one day. It may not. Who knows? But I'm trying my best now to ever avoid of being in a place like that again. And putting in systems where now flows a priority, and now I know how I'm feeling, and I'm more sensitive towards that. So um, there's a lot of things there. You can we can dive we can dive into anything you want. Breathing exercise has helped me a lot too. Um, more more continuous exercise has helped me a lot. And um, now being aware of how I run my business, how I want to achieve my goals and my mission, has changed almost everything. So. Yeah, you know, awareness is key. And so with the meditation and these other things that you've been doing, you are, as you mentioned, more sensitive. You're more aware of if you're going in a direction that's ideal or you start going in a direction that's not ideal. And you're able to catch it earlier, recalibrate accordingly. Rather than, as you said before, just force your way through it. Right. Because if you force your way through it, maybe you might make some temporary progress, but that starts to compound on those impressions on the subconscious mind of four space, four space. And then you can get to a place where it's not pleasant. But now, all these things that you're doing, wonderful, you've got the flow strategy, is helping you be aware of when you're about to if you were about to go in a direction that is not helpful and that is not ideal. And also, stay in the course that is helpful and ideal. What that also does, and I trust you're also noticing this, is it becomes automatic. What I mean by that is you're forming these habits. First of all, you're impressing the subconscious mind with all these ideal perspectives, ideal ways of relating with the experience. That's leaving an impression on the subconscious mind. And it's manifesting as your behaviors, how you emotionally relate, certain thoughts that arise, your mental clarity, etc. And that is transforming you more and more so each day to be that ideal Ed that you mentioned earlier. Right. And so after a while, what happens is it becomes automatic and you stay in the flow. That's a good point. And at the time, you feel like, why is this happening to me? Why, you know, it's, it's almost, you know, I think something we've talked about. Maybe one of the biggest epiphanies I've had last year was, you know what, life happens for me, not to me, right? And when, after I got out of that mess, or even during, while I was kind of going through all that, I knew, you know what, this is just another bump in the road to maybe get to another leveled up version. And looking back, it definitely helped me have the tools that I needed to become who I am and further, right? It goes back to my future version of myself. And it happened for me, not to me, because it did help me. And if, you know, for anyone listening to and for yourself think back at all like the bad times you've had 
the, you know, whether it was going through a bad breakup, maybe you got fired, you know, unfortunately, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's someone who passed, something just, you know, it's just a bad time in your life. After enough time, which is kind of why I really like time being your best friend, it's the, it's the best healer of everything, generally, almost always, good things come out of it. Yeah. Um, you've leveled up or you've just, there's always good that comes out of it. And it's only time, when you're in the thick of it, you're, man, God, why, why me? Why is this happening? Why yeah. did this happen? You know, um, take a pause on that. Give yourself time. Give yourself permission of kind of going through it and still having that opportunity to develop new tools. And then when you get out of that, you learn, man, you know what? Uh, now I know. Now I know that happened for me. Yes. You know, I always say this in my videos. You are already ideal, whole, and complete now. Perfect in every way. Now, the only way a person might not appear to accept that is because they're identified with certain beliefs or particular beliefs in which they doubt themselves about that being the truth. That's the mind purification, what I refer to. As the mind gets purified through acceptance, like in that moment, exactly like how you said, in that moment, they're like, okay, you know what? I experience this as rough. This is difficult. <coughs> Chile. And what is the first, the next thing that I could do? Because now is all the power is. The next thing to bring it in that direction that is authentic and true to them, ideal for them. The shift occurs and they start moving in that direction. And as they remain like that, this is what I said, that you are already whole, complete, perfect in every way possible, have everything, fulfillment, love, happiness, bliss, that's your true nature starts to manifest as the body. It, it, it becomes the way of being. And so what ends up happening then is you actually feel that wherever you are, increasing more so each day. For example, you may be experiencing it right now in this car. You're like, well, we're having this conversation. We're recording it. I'm having a great time. And where we go next, you're having a great time. Even when you're by yourself, I'm having a great time. I'm feeling fulfilled, happiness. Because you experientially acknowledge that you already are perfect, happiness, love, blissful in every way possible. Yep. And how that plays out is, you know those experiences where one maybe finds themselves, let's say, uh, in difficult situations in their life? It's how they respond to what is occurring that is going to determine what happens next, right? If one responds from, you know, it's there within me, some way, somehow it's going to manifest. They're going to be able to get through that situation a lot easier. Now, it's one thing to say it to that person at that point. You know, you are perfect, you are happiness, you are bliss, but they might not uh, in that moment because they're identified with beliefs that would say otherwise acknowledge that. This is why these experiences that you went through, when you look back at it, you can experience the contrast of it and you can say, because I remember, remember when we used to have the calls back then? Yeah. And then you got back into flow and then your business grew through all kinds of success. It wasn't just because of the calls, the yeah. calls contributed to it because they were essentially emphasizing this true way of being. That's all we're doing is we're just simply being ideal in these conversations, like meditating upon it. It's an auto suggestion. Yeah. Your business grew. And then, you know, at some point, maybe you became identified with something and then it went in a different direction. Now you know even more so the protocols of, okay, I'm not going to go down that direction again. I'm going to stay in this direction. I'm going to remain in this direction. I'm going to lead my team so that they too can understand from my experience. So your experience is helpful for others now because when you share your story, because I've had stories like that as well, when we share our stories, what happens is this stuff that we're talking about, it becomes practical. It sounds like nice theory. It could sound like only nice theory, but it's very practical. And then now 
let's say anytime you have a challenge or more more specifically a challenge is being experienced by a team member relationship family whatever you could share this story on how you are able to work through it how are you able to transmute it as i like to say transmuted that experience into this thing that moved you forward and that helps others how do you relate to that i mean i always want to inspire anytime yeah. anywhere i go absolutely I, you've told me that story a number of times and there isn't one time that you told me that story that i didn't feel inspired by it. not one time that means a lot joseph yeah authentically like, that means a lot that 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 your ability to transmute that is a gift for everyone like it's a gift for me to hear it it's a gift for everyone to hear it yeah and it's a gift for your team it's a gift for yourself family that story you know i've had stories like that as well i've shared them on my channel those moments where you're able to prove it in equation when you share that story people feel it i appreciate that and um it's not pretty when it happens but when you're out of it and so maintaining you know good flow and it's uh i can look back and say man that was that was tough that was a tough time and i'm glad cuz something i'm always trying to do is inspire whenever yeah. i can my team my family members and you know you just got to you just got to have some some self belief stick to it be consistent and know that you'll you'll get out of it you know whatever situation you're in it's temporary we're all in a temporary state and there's some relief in that knowing that yes. where i'm at today even if you're very successful maybe even if you're not you know it i could oh this could change for the better right um hopefully not for the worse but know that your state can always change and it starts with you now is where all the power is right yeah this moment yes now is where all the power is yes and what doesn't have to take a radical bold move or whatever they consider to be a radical bold move they can if they like one step could be as simple as a a breath of air a deep breath a little meditation a little walk or an insight might arise when i take this step in that moment some shift happens reimagine it different acceptance and you know there's a whole bunch of as you said earlier uh you have a mental toolbox right right all any one of these tools can be deployed for the moment i wouldn't consider one tool better than the other right i would consider it as uh you use whatever tool is applicable for the job in that moment yes. just because you've got all these tools available in that moment you know which tool to use and in that moment it shifts you shift into a different state slightly and then you move in that direction you notice that uh in consulting leadership what we're doing is we're bringing everyone into the center in our conversations not by shaming or judging or saying the other person has a problem again when we accept that we're already love happiness bliss fulfillment it's way easier to see it in others because it's all one consciousness there's no real separation or gap in consciousness there's the appearances that play out which is fine for our experience and within ourselves we're all interconnected all subconscious minds are interconnected we have the superconscious and relating to each other like right now i'm having a conversation with you but there's a lot of nonverbal things happening things that we're aware of but there are things beyond the five senses that are occurring it's unreasonable to assume i believe that just cuz we have five senses that, that that's all that exists like look, right. you know human beings have five senses therefore nothing exists out of five senses i fi- i find that to be unreasonable to assume that so there's things happening behind the scenes that we're not aware of and we might not be aware of them we don't even need to know what they are but we allow them to happen mm-hmm. how are they happening by simply be being as you are and so what ends up happening is when we're coaching consulting or leading others is uh we we can see that we can imagine that in another person they're fine they're ideal they're they're whole they're complete they're love their fulfillment their happiness 
And what happens is that in the conversation, it naturally arises. So we remain in the center. We remain in that position of now, being now center. And then the conversation automatically orients in a direction, ideally, of what can be done that's helpful for them. And it automatically arises. Like, I'm not thinking about what to say to you. I never, like, anytime you and I did a session together, I never would think about what to say to you. And I would accept fully whatever you brought to the conversation. And you could say, my challenge within is to never identify with any story that would be considered disempowering or limiting towards you. Mm. Not once. Because the moment I got into that, I'm now going into that state. So if ever I was about to identify with something that, let's say, you said, in which I would say something like, I could say something like, you know, this is going to be really hard for Ed or Ed is not going to be able to do it or something like that. I just released it. Just release it in the moment. Go back into the center. Ed is ideal in every way possible. Now, from that, it's not like I would automatically start to convince you. Like, no, Ed, you got to see yourself as ideal. None of that. Right. Whatever arises natural in the conversation. It could be one sentence, two sentence, or no sentence. We could just sit there for 30 minutes and just be there without even speaking a word. If that was what it would call for automatically, authentically from the superconscious, then it would occur that way. Yet the net result of that is you transform. Your life is like, look, look at all these things that happen. You know, one thing leads to the next. How do you relate to that? It took a while. It, it's steps. And nothing wrong with that, right? Right. Nothing totally wrong fine. with that. Yeah. But, you know, it's people may not want to hear this. But it's, for, for example, you know, you, if you're trying to get the seven figures and you should deserve seven figures. Are you at seven figures right now? Is yeah. Business? Are you going for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you have multiple, multiple seven figures. Oh, nice. Congratulations. Thank you. The last time we spoke, you were doing a uh, hundred or 200,000 a month or close to 200,000. So you've grown. So again, when I mentioned earlier, Ed standards, right? And that's one thing I love about you. That another thing I feel very inspired being around you is you're always raising the bar. Yeah. You know, Ed had mentioned to me, and I'm going to get to back, but I don't want to sure, uh, sure. go too far off. Wait, I want to hear what you were saying, uh, but I want to throw this in there. Ed inspires me because he had actually mentioned to me the last time we hang out. He's like, Joseph, you should put out more videos that where you're on camera. And, you know, I listen to Ed. Ed might not think that I, I listen to it, but I do <laughs> listen to it. I, I value everything Ed says. I have a bunch of notes that I've shared with clients that have been things that Ed said because he knows what he's talking about. He's got the results to prove that he knows. And, you know, Ed said that to me. And so my view is I'll keep that in the consideration. And then when I feel flow about it, then I'm going to do it because I'm not going to force myself to do it. And he saw it like he actually saw it coming. Ed's a psychic in that regard. And then look, now I'm doing videos like that. So thank you, Ed. Please continue. You're welcome. And I'm glad to serve as an inspiration. Yeah. And uh, that's one thing I'd say about you, Ed, is you have the ability to, to foresee things. You remind me a lot of uh, Steve Jobs. Oh, wow. Well, that's, that's like my biggest compliment of the year. So I appreciate that. Please continue. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, so it's, you got to deserve, I mean, so it's kind of controversial maybe, but people feel like they deserve certain things or are entitled to, right? Not that this audience is, however, if, for example, every, um, something that's very common that people want to, like, you know, they say $10,000 a month is when I'll be financially independent. That seems to be the sweet mark, right? Yeah. If I can make 10 k a month, I will be in a good place. I'll be financially free. My bills are taken care of. I can support my kids. Uh, I can have my wife quit, whatever the case is. And so, but you also need to be deserving of that of that amount, right? Whether that's that amount or seven, you know, if you're trying to hit seven figures, um, meaning that you need to be you need to be able to, you know, bring enough value to validate that. You need to be able to support a team, uh, be a good leader, operations. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is you level up to the degree of what you're worth at the time, you make the proportional amount and then for some reason, life has a really funny, interesting way of when you start announcing either privately or publicly your goals to the universe, suddenly maybe 
to maybe to think, maybe to kind of test if you're really ready. It'll start throwing challenges to you. Maybe curveballs, things that you wouldn't expect coming towards you. That's kind of what happened to me last year. And if you overcome them, you're on your way to becoming or closer to your goal. So it's not, it's not, it's not testing if you're worthy of it or not. It's, it's kind of what it takes to get to that level. And guess what? And so like the problems we have now in the business would haunt me if I, if the problems I'm encountering now, if I encounter them in my first year of business would literally haunt me and I would stay up all night. Now I tell my team, great, just any other, now it's like a regular Tuesday, right? You're a wonderful leader, Ed. So it takes, um, I, don't, I don't think problems ever go away. They would never stop. If people tell that to you, they're, they're lying. But you do get better at dealing with them. You get better at solving them faster, efficiently, and you, sometimes more creatively. And so that's the only difference that there is at, the, at, at higher levels. Um, and the, and the, more, the more you make, the more abundant you are, the, e the faster and easier problem solving skills you have. You, you just become a better problem solver at the end of the day. And it's proportional. So at that time, at that level, if you're trying to make 10K a month, okay, you might have a virtual assistant. Maybe your wife's helping you. And you have, let's say, level one problems. That's not a, that's fine. You're still gonna have problems. But at level three, or let's say you're now, you're, let's say you're making six figures a month, right? We're, we're close to like 200K a month. Maybe, I don't know what level that is. Let's say, let's say it's, you know, level three, level four problems. You know, those problems are just bigger. They're not any, they're not gone away. They're not uh, easier. There are sometimes hairy, complex problems, but we still have to solve them. So I don't know if that, if that makes sense, that that helps. You yes, know, but, uh, that is tremendously you just helpful. You just level up. And that's just like the yeah. business stuff. There's the flow state stuff. There's the personal side of stuff. So, um, and it's a great journey, so. And thank you for sharing that. That's a, that's a key distinction. Okay, so you have chosen to put yourself in a position where you're dealing with more complexity, right? You are experiencing more complexity now than you've ever experienced in your life before in terms of your business, but maybe in other areas of your life as well, but you intentionally put yourself in this position because you enjoy the challenge and you want to continue to grow, you're motivated. Right. And so then there's more uh, nuances that we want to consider when it comes to being in the flow. You know, it's, it's easy for me to be like, oh, Ed, just be in the flow. Yet, <laughs> I also consider, and in a way I could say that, but I want, to, I want to respect this. When I say be in the flow, that's essentially the truth. That's the foundation to anybody and myself. Yet, it's important to acknowledge that as we're dealing with the various complexities and nuances, that how we maintain the flow in those complexities and nuances uh, also need to be factored and kept into consideration. So Ed's dealing with more complexity. And so thus, I would say, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Ed, uh, being in the flow also has to ensure being in the flow while considering all those complexities. Yes. In other words, how does one be in the flow while dealing with whatever kind of complexities that may be very different than maybe a lot of people are dealing with in that regard. And so you seek counsel with those that are able to maintain flow yes. in those complexities that perhaps you're dealing with now, but they have dealt with before. And it's but, contagious. Yeah. So for example, when we're dealing with a problem with the team, they're looking at you as how to react, yeah. right? And as a, as a leader, you shouldn't be really reacting. You should be all, you know, you should be responding. That's yes. a huge difference, huge differentiator there. And they look at you, you know, if you're, you know, ideally, yeah. right, you want to be cool, calm, and collected. And then it instills confidence in them, knowing that, you know what, I thought this was going to like blow up the meeting. I thought you might have gotten pissed or I might have gotten in trouble, whatever the case is. But when they bring up something to you and the way, again, goes back to the how. How you solve it yes. was the art. The, the art of it, exactly. And that's what I've, you know, and I've, I've gotten 
even some like private messages from employees or like feedback uh, either from other employees saying like, you know what, we, you know, um, it feels good that we have a true leader leading us. And yes, we're a small company, um, and but I'm able to get people kind of bought into that vision of where we're going because I tell them what we've done. And there's people that were with the new division we're launching, they're willing to take a pay cut. They're willing to, you know, uh, just because it's a startup, it's early days. And just because they're bought into the vision. Both yes. Days, so, Based on our conversations so far, and also your experience on the entrepreneurial journey, and knowing, because you have been engaging with my content for a lot of, uh, you know, many years now, right? Since when did you find my channel? Um, I think it must have been 2018. Does that sound, it's 2018? That's, I think you reached out to me in 2018. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which video was it that you found me on? I think it was like a you mentioned Napoleon Hill, and it was something with with might have been uh, the Napoleon Hill three hour monster video. May, maybe, maybe that was. I'm considering it. doing another one of these. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Yeah. What would be one key insight or key takeaway that you feel will benefit everyone watching this now? It's gonna be. It's gonna sound boring, but it's gonna be the one thing that is. It will. If you don't stop this, will eventually lead you to success. And that's just consistency and always be taking action. I think in the beginning, you're, you know, it's okay to kind of learn the manual, learn process, all this stuff. But eventually it's just like driving. You can, someone can teach you about it. You can read as much as you, as much as you can about it. At the end of the day, you just got to go out and drive. You got to just put in the miles. You got to practice. And I encourage everybody, uh, just, Always be taking action. Don't give up, and it will pan out. Um, and it that's always just well. It maybe because I'm stubborn. I just never wanted to give up. It's always worked well for me. And one more thing is, I'd always rather fail due to maybe taking an act, the wrong action. Maybe I lost money. Maybe time or whatever the case is, due to versus. Um, something due to inaction, not doing anything. I'd rather swing and miss, and at least I've tried something, and then I'm gonna try something else again, versus not doing anything at all, wondering it might have worked or what if. So that's my, those are my two cents, and they've served well for me. That's wonderful. That is accurate. Thank you very much for that. You know, I believe in the integration, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. That's how you get into the flow, a nice, harmonious, interrelationship with spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. And so the combination of being inspired, staying in that flow, moving forward with those initiatives, you remain like that. And if any kind of flow restrictors show up, self-talk, auto-suggestion, release identification, remain in it, repeat, repeat, repeat. And that's what you did. And now you live a wonderful, uh, exciting life. Ed, I appreciate you very much for dedicating some time to share this with everyone for everyone's benefit. I appreciate you very much. Everyone appreciates you. Yes, thank you so much. You have, uh, you've ju you're just getting started. <laughs> I feel like I am. You've come along so far. Yeah. And uh, keep up the great work. Thank All you right? so much. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate it.